Okay, guys, so as always, let's set up our camera locations. We've got the, the ramp there. Oh, excellent. Queued up an extra depot, which is why I didn't have money. And let's double these workers on those close patches. Rally the command center to a patch that doesn't have anyone on it. Or that one will do for now. There we go. All right, natural third base in front, because we like to protect our our bases with our army. So I always in TVT like to be out front my bases, specifically so that we can't get um, Doom Drop. They would have to go through my frontal expansions to Doom Drop me, unless they go around the left into the back of my natural, which is the naturally... Going into the natural is naturally the most dangerous drop path that one can go for. So we take our second gas pretty much immediately, guys. And we're still doubling up on these close mineral patches. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Because they do mine a little bit faster. Now, of course, we also want to start doing those other tricks, remember? Tell him to gather from the inside once he's done building. And there we go. We rally an extra two on there. Oh, we accidentally didn't have the third one on the first gas, so a little sloppy there. Now, we actually forgot to send the SCV scout across this game, guys. So that's something I've got to remember, is it's a little bit my different man. to what I do in my uh, my main account games right now. It's only a little different. It's not massively different. So we're going to just use this SCV to kind of scout around there before heading back. And as soon as we hit 100 gas, which is not the fastest one, we pull one off to build the factory. Pull another off to build the thinger. You're trapped in here with me! And then we build more SCVs, keep dropping meals. Our workers keep bouncing off our patches. Annoyingly, annoyingly. Queue up another Reaper. And we want to go with our Reaper to scout the right side, just to see if there's any proxies down there, okay guys? And there is! Okay, so we're going to put a... We're going to build the factory, and we've got to pull all these guys. So you want to just always have these guys. Now, the way you want to do this is keep building marines, because they build faster, and hellions. Build another depot, raise that. <clears throat> and the way you want to do this, guys, SCVs are on army 2, reapers on army 1. Okay? Now put guys back on gas. You don't want to be missing that. And we're going to put a marine down there. And all my other guys are just going to wait in the middle. And what you want to do is you want to build a command center, okay? So here, if they're doing this sort of thing... There we go. You see, he can't really fight there. That's kind of crazy of him. So, let's get a tech lab now, and then a reactor once you've held. Now, if you want to be a real Chad gamer, you also sneak your Reapers around. And they're going to go into his main and do some harass while everything else defends. So, why is that a Chad gamer move? Well, it's very dangerous, because if he could jump in and kill me, right? Well, not really. So, we're going to just keep those Marines there. <clears throat> we're going to build Cyclones, because they're the best unit. And we'll go for that starport now. So we're going to go towards our normal game plan here. Uh, a nice way to warm up today, that's for sure. Build another tech lab. <clears throat> and if you can sneak your Reapers out against any proxy, it's a great way of um, just checking what's up. So, looks like he's probably not there anymore. We can sell the bunker and build another cyclone. It looks like, yep, look, we can see his barracks are floating home. Awesome. Great news. Great news for us, guys. So what are we going to do? We're going to build another cyclone. Are we though? Nah, let's just build a tank. And what are we doing in the meantime? Well, we're building up in our normal path. So what comes after 1-1-1? One, one, one? Well, we can get a tech lab there to build a raven. Wait a second, we don't do that, do we guys? We don't build a raven. We're doing our simple build order. So anyways, <clears throat> cyclone can wait there. Uh, everything else can just go to the natural. You guys know we always like to leave that cyclone on defense duty wherever possible. And let's make sure that camera location's good. All right, so you've got the third command center. What goes after the third command center? Well, first of all, keep building SCVs, keep building Marines, keep building tanks, right? Real simple. And then your next thing is always the same. It is gonna be your second and third barracks. 
And there we go. We've got to queue up more SCVs now that we've got two landed. And notice I'm very short on minerals. So I'm tapping the key, but I'm only now. I kept tapping it because I didn't actually have the units popping out immediately. And that's something you got to be wary of. Oops. So, um, this guy is always in the main. That's just something that we always do. The other army over here is on my main army key. Now, we're going to build Vikings. Why do we build Vikings? Remember, guys, Vikings are basically just going to be very nice for making sure we don't die to dumb stuff, but they can also double up as a harassment unit. So we're going to use our first two Vikings to land in the main and behind the natural, and that's going to be really useful to gather information. Now, at this point, we're also very blind, right? So we've got to look at that and say, wait a second, he's going double Banshee. That's fucking weird, isn't it? Um, but it is what it is. So we've got to save scans right now. Okay, so check it out. We're putting all of my anti-air on a hotkey. Um, we're going to build two tech labs there because he's probably playing mech behind this. And we're building lots more stuff. Okay. So we're trying to build Vikings and all of this stuff. And he's going to fly into that. Which is obviously not the greatest. We're trying to build turrets. One there, one there. We can also get one up here in between the production. And what are we doing while we wait, guys? Well, we're just fleshing things out. So, double gas is obviously the thing that comes down after the double eBay. We go double upgrades is always something we want to do. <clears throat> Am I getting that order right? Second and third barracks, double eBay. Four. I actually don't have the third and fourth gas written in my build order, I don't think, guys. All right. Remind me at the end of this, we got to write that in the build order. <laughs> Pretty sure they're not written down. Lazy build right up, pig. Lazy. All right, guys. So we're going to send a uh, Viking down either side of the map, as I said. We can build Marauders here as well instead of just building Marines. And the reason that they're going to be very good, as we've said, is because... Go ahead. You want a piece of me, boy? SCV ready. Um... So the reason why they're going to be very good is just because we expect mech here, right? So, <clears throat> multiple factories, not a big surprise. So now we're just sending out some spotters. We're taking our third base right now, so we're going to keep those guys out there. We're missing our fourth and fifth barracks, so that's going to round out our two base production. Gotta get a move on with that. Especially these chaotic games, it's so easy to get distracted and kind of jump ahead in your game My plan. Man. But... Dude, can you just... Why are you in here? Bad. Oh my god, he got out. You're kidding me. Well, that was embarrassing. Um, <laughs> okay, so he's gone and taken a third now. Awesome. Okay, cool. Now, because we've got air control, though, we are going to add a liberator in soon, right? Because he can't have air control, can he? Look, we're scanning just to check. He absolutely can't. So we're already queuing a liberator behind our next two guys. <clears throat> and because he's playing mech, against a mech player, you would like to play greedier than normal, guys. Can you not, bro? Well, the crazy thing is we, we knew we'd have a way bigger army because he went double starport and did nothing with it. So just naturally, we barely even needed to look at his army to know that our army was better than his, right? That's just the way it was. We're also going to take a fifth on location, and this is because opponent's going mech number one. We can be greedy. Number two, we've won multiple engagements, really one-sidedly. So what, we, what we're sensing there is that we are not just ahead anymore, guys. We are infinitely ahead. Now, that's why we are taking what I call an A move. Because he's coming on the map with a mech army against me. I'm the bio guy. He also has stim bio, which tells us his army makes no sense, by the way. And we're just going to attack it and kill him. Now, why are we doing that? Because he's playing mech, but he's thrown away multiple units. And as long as I've spent my money, there's no way I can have less stuff than my opponent. There's just no way. So if your opponent's just taking bad fights like that, 
I could have done this sort of cocky stuff that I've done. Right? I could have done that and have thrown the game right now. Now, the reason I know I wasn't is because I spent my money. But if I was panicked and not spending my money during it all, I wouldn't have done that. <clears throat> you can see here that my opponent's build order was just absolutely bananas. So the three Rax Reaper, first of all, got in. How much did he kill? Almost nothing. Almost nothing, right? Now, like I said, normally I send an SCV across the map early. But if you just check around for proxies, your Reaper hops down. That's the other alternate scouting pattern in TBT. But my opponent, the Reaper, Reapers did no damage. So he's behind, number one. A bunch of other things. Very, very uh, late as well. Remember to put it in the build order. Thank you, mate. So first of all, we get an SCV kill there, number one. Number two, we see what's happening. We go, whoa, okay. So we get back up in here. Keep in mind, he's already down three SCVs at this point, guys. My orbital's finished and mules are mining. His orbital just started. So he gets one SCV. Does he get any wastes a bit of my mining time? Now, big mistake here, guys. I haven't played against many 3RX Reapers lately. I took a long time to control group these SCVs. Now, the way you want to do this, main army, Reapers, Hellions, Marines. You want to swap to Marine production as soon as possible. Should have done that faster. Number two. Number two. What is number two, guys? SCVs, num they go on control group two. Army one Reapers, army two SCVs, okay? Because you want these to be your body blockers. There are gonna be moments where you tell your Reapers, your Hellions to back away from the grenades, back away from their Reapers, and your SCVs just A moving or even being used to body block. So let's take a look. Okay, so you see he comes up here and my SCVs weren't on a control group, so I was a little slow to get there. But at the end of the day, I think we lost a single SCV. Yeah, we only lost one SCV, got forced into a bunker. How late is our command center because of all this, guys? Maybe 30, 40 seconds, I think. I think we put it down right here, right? Yeah, it's about 40 seconds late, my command center. I mean, come on, his build's way worse than this. So we're already ahead here, right? This already feels pretty good. And because we he, he sacrifices the Reapers here for almost nothing, we still haven't lost any units, right? The only trick there is we just kept pulling back, making sure we didn't eat the grenades too bad, okay? So that's that's that. So what happened though? The moment we defended, I said Reapers across the map. So if he stayed aggressive stance, these Reapers would have snuck over and killed a ton of SCVs and it would be even more game over. But otherwise, I've already got a tech lab and then a reactor going down. And remember, we go commands and a lot of people rush their starport in this scenario. If you rush your starport and you've already lost mining time, lost a few SCVs to a Reaper rush, your command center ends up really far behind. And there's one thing that's very common at high level, and that's they're always going to build a tech lab and a cyclone very early behind their push. So you'll be like, yeah, I've got a liberator. And unless you proxy that starport super fast, instantly built a liberator and siege it up in there, there's just going to be a cyclone ready for your Raven harass, your Banshee harass, your liberator harass, whatever it is. So the early starport doesn't really help you get ahead unless you're just building Ravens and playing a very slow game. So in general, we like to build a quick command center stick to the same build order, the same goals as we normally do. We can add the starport after that. Okay, cool. So things are going pretty well for us here. We can see it in the supply, right? We're up six, six workers, 15 supply. So we already knew, okay, we're pretty good, right? But we don't want to like attack into him and be like, oh, I got to go win the game because we don't know how many extra Reapers he built. We know he's probably building extra Cyclones and so on. Just trying to focus on securing everything to the next stage. Third command center, then a second and third barracks, then double engineering bay, and then double gas. Now that's how we're doing it because why? Because remember, we're not super focused on non-stop starport production. And even if we were, it's not going to spend gas as quickly as Raven production does. I lied, it will, because if you've got a reactor building, it's actually going to... It, it will. It's just because we build our reactor, the reactor takes longer. So if you think about it, two Vikings at a time is 150 gas. A Raven is 200 gas. But a Raven takes almost 50% longer to build. So technically pumping two Vikings at a time nonstop does actually use more gas than a Raven building one at a time. But uh, yeah, despite that, I think, I think you're pretty fine on the two gases. And this kind of keeps the build nice and simple. It's nice to squeeze in a third gas if we were being super optimal with like a Raven or two coming out or non-stop starport production. The reason we don't care about that in this build is very straightforward. It's like, minerals are most important. Make third, make barracks, make ebays, and then make gases. So let's tab out to our build notes. CC. Third CC, second and third barracks, double ebay. 
third and fourth gas. Now, depending on how you play, you might prefer to get the gas earlier. The important thing is not what this order is, guys. The important thing is that you do it in a consistent way and that you memorize that, always do it the same way and that the way you play strategically lines up with it. So if your third command center comes down all the way down here after the fourth and fifth barracks, well, you've really got to commit to some aggression to try and make that, that really work out. Um, likewise, if you go third command center the way we're doing it, it's a much more defensive stance, right? We don't need to go and force a fight to happen. However, what do we normally push with, guys? <clears throat> One Reaper poke, three Reaper plus two Hellion attack, which we kind of abandoned all these because of the opening that game. Viking harassment, which we were going to go for, but then we scanned and saw that he was going Banshee, so we just stayed at home, kept them there for defense. And then there's a 1-1 one, one Marine Tank Bio starts pushing. Now there is potentially another push before this, right? Three to four tank, six Viking, plus Marine push, right? And that's very optional. I mean, they're all kind of optional, but we could absolutely kind of do just a generic push where we're trying to get our tank sieged and use the range and the air supremacy advantage of the Vikings to try and pick off their Ravens and that sort of stuff. Yeah, kind of like an air superiority push, um, but that's that's a real real option more than anything. So we'll see how we go with that. Wait, are we playing zero Raven? Says Ashabert. That's right. <clears throat> At four minutes, we scan to check if there's Banshee tech. Um, if there's if there's cloak on the way, then we then we do react with an engineering bay. Likewise, if they're one basing really hard, we might go for that engineering bay earlier. Yeah, it's not bad to build a Raven by any means, um, but we've, I've, I've seen a lot of players who I feel aren't that skilled make it to high masters without building Ravens. And I think it just, it, it complements a player who's not the fastest. Whereas the Raven player is much more of a mechanical and um, get good game sense unit for a player who's like really adept at that. So anyway, guys, we scanned um, and saw double starport production, right? And we were like, oh, okay. So we just pulled our Vikings back. We shut down these Banshees. And already, double starport is a huge gimmick, a huge gamble. We kill the two Banshees for free. And, I mean, at this point, we're like, okay, so we've shut down the Reapers. Now we've shut down two Banshees. I'm macroing like a beast. Like, I already feel like I'm way ahead at this point, right? So, why was I so confident? Well, you've got to think of StarCraft as a sliding scale, right? Or, or, or think of it as a, there's a set of scales, actually. Not a sliding scale. Think of it as a set of scales. Right now, my side is filled with gold and their side has a little dog turd. Guess what? The gold is heavier, right? Because I've won a fight and then another fight and they've committed so hard to the aggression and they haven't found anything. So I didn't I didn't know I was up 30 supply. I didn't know I was up nine SCVs. I just knew I was ahead. I had a sense that I'm ahead, a good chunk, right? So as long as I keep up my production, we should be good. Now, one thing that I was missing, I didn't know my opponent went for a third command center. So if they were just on two base production, then maybe this wasn't the best. Now, my opponent's build order is a silver build order, guys. They're going double starport, then three, then they're trying to play bio just because they have the three barracks left over. Neither of these are good builds. If you've opened three racks reaper, you always want to play pure bio. And then goes three factories. So this is, are you playing mech? Are you playing bio? It's kind of a silver mix of units. It's kind of good because it's going to confuse the opponent. Um, but it's also bad because it's just, there's no way this is going to be efficient. You can't afford engineering bay upgrades and combat shields and stim and tanks and to use your starports. Where are you going to get your money from? You know, how, how are you going to do this? It's just, it doesn't make sense. This does not match up at all. Yeah. So I scanned again and said, yep, he is going mech, though I saw quite a few Marines and I was really wondering what was on those, those add-ons. Uh, I wasted time chasing these um, Reapers. Uh, it caught me right when I didn't have a production cycle going. No Marines were popping. Otherwise I could have just rallied some my, my rally points over and dealt with that. But yeah, yeah, let's take a look guys. So at this point I was like, cool, we're good. I was thinking, okay, we, we probably want to start pushing soon because we've you know, we're getting up to five barracks. We're going to start two, two, two more reactors, another factory for a tech lab. And, um, you know, this is going to be fantastic. We'll, we'll go have a good one. And then he pushes in and uh, obviously we just have a much bigger army than him. So we're able to just aim at this because because right now I know game sense wise he should be turtling up. And that's it. It's like his job is to turtle up. 
So then even seeing him come out here, I didn't realize he had two tanks sieged in the back. And I was like, oh, he just has one or two tanks in the open. I was like, this guy's crazy. So I just felt like I could A-move him. And I was actually shocked by how many tanks my opponent had. So well done to my opponent. But I literally just F2, Stim A-moved and landed my Vikings there. And this was purely off my game sense. This was not off what I saw on the screen, guys. Remember, when I saw those tanks, I was surprised by how many tanks there were. I was actually kind of shocked. I'm like, how the hell? How's he got so many things? But we still ended up crushing it. And that's the advantage of going off of our game sense rather than, because you never see everything in the screen. And this is a skill you want to build over time. This is not something you're born with. This is something by watching replays and going, I knew I was ahead after this, yep. Oh, but then I forgot another Banshee came in and killed 12 SCVs. Ooh, so maybe that evened it out a bit. Sometimes in the heat of the battle, you forget to take into account that their scale evened out at some point or even got ahead of you and that you should actually, you know, not be so cocky, right? That happens to a lot of players where they remember one thing that went well for them and they forget everything that went bad for them and they're like, I should be able to just win. <laughs> and they just take a terrible fight. And you're like, oh, why, why'd you attack there? They're like, well, I should just have this stuff. And I'm like, you have 17 roaches. And they're like, I know, it's so many. And I'm like, the other guy has four immortals and like 10 zealots. And they're like, and I'm like, yeah, that's not a good fight. Well, they're A-moving the giant tank line. How do you beat Mass Tank Viking? Uh, anything? Yeah, so that's just a mech composition. I mean, Vikings don't... Vikings only control the air. They're really bad versus ground. Where'd that question go? I saw it before, now it's disappeared. It's up a bit. Did you actually see the Banshees? How do you make the call that it's not greedy BCs? Well, I thought it was BCs at first, but then I saw the Tech Lab upgrading, and there's no Battlecruiser upgrades on the Tech Lab, and that was upgrading the moment I scanned it. It's not like he saw the scan and then started the upgrade, like, a few seconds in. And then I also saw the Banshees pop out. Um, but it would have been the same response either way. Get, an, get the engineering bays, which I was about to do anyway in my build order so I can add some turrets. That's not too important for battlecruisers, that's more for banshees, but build vikings, add an extra cyclone or two. I normally wouldn't add cyclones, right? But because there's two starports, I'm like, nah, no such thing as an underreaction here. Get out a few, another cyclone or two and, and just keep building vikings and we'll be fine. And then keep doing your build order. Don't, don't change everything, right? All right, guys, we got ourselves a Terran versus Zerg game here. All right, so what's cool is we are going to be doing 1-1-1, one, 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 Hellion Lib into mine, into Bio Mine. Going to try and parade across this map in glorious fashion. And as always, it's a lot of pushing forward, occupying the opponent, dropping around them as our Marine Widow Mine Onslaught marches forward. Never making it too easy for our opponent is, is one of the big things that we have to look for. Now remember, our SCV goes across, and we're even going to check if my opponent takes the gold with that SCV. We don't need to really do that, but, you know, put those guys on gas. We tell this guy to mine from the inside. Grab that guy. You go there. Beautiful. So remember, because that guy's going to scout, he can't build the command center. So if you're ever scouting with your barracks SCV like we do in this matchup, we rally the next one down. And as soon as that pops, we change the rally point back here. So it's going to be uh, Reaper, which is also going to go in Orbital, change the rally point. Go ahead. What's going? <clears throat> in the rear with the gear. Once that goes down, you want to go build that depot, of course. I'm going to go SCV and drop a mule the moment Command that's done. We want to build a marine after the Reaper. Oh my! So, that is pull first, guys. The Grim Reaper has arrived. So that means our Reaper stays at home, okay? Now, we're going to come up here to build a factory. After the factory, we start our second gas. Reactor after the, the marine there. Now, why is our Reaper here, guys? Well, our Reaper's here for a very good reason. And that's because our opponent has gone pull first. And Zerglings could run in and cancel our command center. So we'll be real careful there. You see those Zerglings? We're sneaking past those. I'm going to try and see if there's roaches behind it. And there is. So that's very important scouting, guys. Very important. So everything's going to rally up into the main. And we're just going to build add-ons here and try and get units out as quickly as possible, okay? So. It's 
we're trying to build a tech lab. These units. Now he's going to have to pull back. We're not going to kill that overlord. So let's just be very safe here, guys. Now we rally there and shift here so that marines don't pop out on the outside of the wall. We're also going to build another depot because these depots very likely will go down. <clears throat> and we're going to pull SCVs. We're going to build a tank. More marines. And these guys move shift right click to repair the other side of the wall okay that's gonna lift off we're building more marines right now and look at that there's even more guys coming so we're gonna scout down there as well pull these scvs back we don't want to be losing anything and we're gonna build a viking now why are we building a viking this game guys <clears throat> the reason is the viking can um kill the overlord okay Okay, so, <clears throat> check it out, guys. Two guys there, the rest on the natural. We know he's pulling back. Oh, he's actually going to come for me. What a dick. Everything's rallied there. We've got the Viking coming down. Another tank, just in case. And we're going to just A-move this, okay? So, just going to A-move that. <clears throat> Pull that Reaper back, because why not? So now the Reaper's going to see if there's any follow-up aggression. Our Viking is going to go and just start clearing up the map. We've got a Liberator, because that's what we normally do next. We're playing incredibly safe. And look at this, there's Overlords all over the map. So we're going to kill this one, and then that one in the middle. And that's going to be great. Now what do we do behind it, guys? We do what we always do. Fix your macro, right? Whenever you dealt with aggression. We've got a Liberator there. We can swap this around if we want. <clears throat> so we're gonna put another tank down there. Why not? We're gonna build a command center uh, here. I guess this guy should build it, and then we can finish the wall. So that's a full wall off. We're building SCVs, command center, SCVs. We've got a liberator rallied across. We're gonna build a few Hellions here. Not too many. We're just doing that just because that's kind of what we'd normally be doing. And look how many overlords we're getting. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so now we build. Check it out, guys. Two barracks. And we queue those workers there. More SCVs on the way. Now, we don't want to be losing that. Viking. We're going to queue our Liberator in here. And we can go over there. We can sell that bunker. We've got those two. Let's go double engineering bay. Let's get 4th and 5th barracks. We're just kind of batching things up all at once, guys. And we're going to reposition our Liberator as well, one time. We're not going to look at that anymore because we've got too much macro to do. Way too much macro to do right now. So, just making sure. These guys, are they all queued back? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Let's put guys on gas early. That's not ready yet, but we're already oversaturated on minerals. And we've got shit to do. Lift these barracks over. And this is a very common move. Remember, we always do that. We always try to use the reactors from our tech buildings, which are no longer important. That's one of the most important things that we try to always do. And check it out now. Well, now we've got this beautiful position where we've got all of our upgrades on the way. We can start the armory ahead of time. Um, we might as well just start that second factory straight away, right? You know, we're just getting things done ahead of time. But check it out. Time to take our third. And easy peasy. That's our third. That's our fourth. That's our fifth. We were a bit slow on setting those up this game, but that's all right. We're going to put a tank down there. We're going to be grabbing all of these units. And just saying, that's fine. And where do we our depots build? Well, we've got to build them here. And we can grab these guys. What's going on? And we can also start putting depots down there. Two more. More marines. We're killing up lots of marines right now. Lots of SCVs. Lots of widow mines. Um, we've only got two workers on that gas. So notice I'm just going to scroll between my bases. What's missing here? Nothing. We can get an armor upgrade if we want on that. Full of mining. Great. Third base. Full of mining. We're going to build a few more SCVs. Right? We need to get up to 66. And we need two depot builders. Gary and Bruce as always. And what are we building? Concussive, more Widow Mines, more Medivacs, which, by the way, check it out, guys. Our Medivacs have not built yet. Why is that? It's because we messed up. <laughs> now, in general, 
you can always just do things like put marine spotters out to spot for run buys. I like to put widow mines out. We always like to put widow mines out. Oh shit! Guys, we just saw a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of uh, muters coming in. So that we were not expecting. Let's build a Thor. More marines. These guys going there. We need more medevacs, of course. So we've got these guys up here. So check it out. So these guys are going to be in the main. And that's my, my squad that defends my main. They're on a different hotkey. Everything else is down here. And they're actually going to go towards those units as much as possible. Putting guys on gas straight away. Make sure we don't forget that. So my opponent's going to be annoying with their muters. Good on him. But notice how those Widow Mines are just creating so much space for me right now. So what do we do behind that, guys? Same thing we always do. Three more barracks. We're not finished our macro yet. We saw the muters moving to the left, so we're moving to the left. We're going to build a fourth command center. We can prepare that turret. And that's annoying. But, guess what? Their army sucks balls. Let's try and cut them off. See if he's just hanging in the open, maybe. Let's make these into Hellbats, by the way, because they're kind of running ahead. We're trying to just chase the muters down. Not really. More we're just trying to make sure we don't die. Let's start the upgrades. And he hasn't really come in our main at all, so we're just going to build a few more turrets there. And it's time to push, guys. So let's push down this middle. There we go. Apparently that fourth command center never built, by the way. So let's start that one up. So we're going to do some spreadies there. Add on complete. These guys are going to build more of those. We've got the fourth command center on the way. Extra armor upgrade on the way. And now we can start building marauders because we've got eight barracks up, okay? And at this point, what do we do? Well, this map's so crowded that honestly, you don't, you're already in their territory. You just need to kind of grab the units and move them. Oh, he's over there, is he? Okay, it's being a bit annoying. So we're just gonna grab, what do they do? Control click, take some marines. So this is going to be my anti-muter squad. We should never have taken those off our control group, guys. And their job is just to chase the muters away, that's all. What are we going to do over here, guys? Let's stim them. Don't need to do much else. If you want to be fancy, you can pick up a Thor and then drop it and then pick it up and then drop it and the Link Bane derps out. But you don't need to do any of that. Now this double drop, because the muters ran away from that, is just going to turn into a squad. And then we keep doing... What do we do, guys? Shift click. Shift click. Oh, he's here. I did not realize. It's alright. He's not going to fight me, you know? Oh, look, we've got a gold base. So these guys are going to say, hey, <clears throat> you've not only got to deal with this one, you've also got to deal with that drop up there, right? So those guys just being annoying. And then we can just run away with them. Or if the muters find us, we can fight them. And these guys are just going to go hide up there. And it looks like these guys are all going to just keep coming forward. And that was kind of hard because he had, he had muters forcing us to react. So there's an argument behind loading up a drop. The moment we saw the muters on the bout, south, loading up a drop or sending some marines just to pull our opponent's APM. So obviously I got, I got APM for days, but I think there's a few little strategies we could use if you're not as fast as me here. Because muters are a pain in the dick. What, the Liberator is the easiest one to do this with. If you already have Liberator out, it's amazing. But <clears throat> otherwise, everything was a little delayed, right? Because he was very aggressive early. We defended it. We'll go back and, and talk about that reaction a bit more because it's a very well-practiced reaction. 
I see the muters at this point. No, I didn't actually have a drop ship, did I, guys? But what are some things? Well, like I said, anything to pull your opponent's attention away. Because what do they want to do? They want to control the map with the muters, keep you busy, keep you running around in circles, getting bits of damage, distracting you. What are they going to do? Hold down the drone key, right? Hold down the drone key, drone a fourth, drone a fifth, maybe. Make double upgrades, Thanks make Bane speeds, make a billion Ling Bane, and then it, they get past this, this period just by using this small squad of muters to control the skies. So what I could have done is I could have just grabbed a, a chunk of my units and just said... Go A move the gold mineral line. And if you've not got a base there, A move up there. And the idea is those units are taken off your main army. They're not high micro. It's just, here's a distraction. Because for a lot of players, especially if you and your opponents are both constricted by APM a little bit more, the ability to force your opponent to react to something, say it's like 10 Marines, eight Marines and two Hellions, something like this, whatever it is, whatever you've boxed here. It sounds like a lot of units, but in the grand scale of, if you can get three base production up, that is literally worth nothing. Your APM and your actions are the most important thing. So that would have, if you guys struggle against muters, that's a really good thing to do. Some people, if they've already got some medevacs out or some or a lib out, they like to go, okay, let's queue a lib. Send it through the north of the map and go queue up on the back of this third base. Come in here, siege up the back of the mineral line. It's going to force the muters back, force them to pull drones, force their attention away, right? So you got, if you guys aren't as fast as me, and I'm really bad against muter play with bio play. It's been a while since I've done it. And I've always... Just, I haven't really in years put time into being well-practiced and well-executed in the scenario. So I kind of chased my own tail a little bit here and got pretty disorganized, guys. A little bit slow to continue depot production. Um, I, I could have just left a Thor of those Marines in the main. Now, remember, what did I do, guys? I split off two medevacs and 16 Marines, and I put those on a different control group. You can see they're down here. And what shows up as control group one, this is more the equivalent of, say, control group three or four, depending on what, obviously, I use custom groups, so... They, that's what I think. That's usually my drop squad, essentially, is what I put on that key, guys. But I use it as this squad. Now, they should have, when the muters were being annoying in the top of the map, they should have just come up here and defended and secured the fourth for me and done that chasing the muter job earlier. But I made a mistake, right? So I made a mistake where I said, well, he's not harassing, he's being up there. I don't need the Marines in the main. And you're going to see me grab these Marines and you'll notice I just chucked them back in my main army. I lazily throw everything together, start pushing. Muters keep being annoying, and then I needed to split them off again. And that was really bad for me. That was really bad play. Okay, guys? So I should have just sent them, clear the muters in the north, and then go go do double drop pressure yourself. And if you see the muters in the lings of base, you just pick up, boost back to the corner. And if they get hunted down, that's fine. Because at the same time, you're spreading your Widow Mines deep on creep. You're still macroing. As long as you keep scale of the big picture, you will win the game. You've got to remember to do that. You've got to remember to do that. Now, what's the other big thing in this game, guys? Obviously, it was that early game. So, <clears throat> what are we looking for with our SCV scout? Just a little bit of a rehash, guys. You are looking for that hatchery is meant to have just finished or be just finishing as your Reaper pops out. Now, obviously, there's already Zerglings out, so I know that's not the case. But I see the hatchery was almost finished. So, I know, okay, it's pull first. I've got to keep the Reaper there. It and the Marine will be able to defend. If there's six Zerglings come in, he might be able to kill the SCV and I'll just have to bring a new one down. If I'm really advanced, I'll pop him off, run him around a bit and then put him back on. The danger though is that that keeps me so busy with my Reaper that I'm not scouting. And then I get surprised by quick Roach Warren, which is exactly what my opponent's doing. So what did I do with my SCV guys? I went, I hit it up there for a bit and then I came, I was, I was actually bringing it home and then I changed my mind and said, wait a second. So normally I'd hide that up here and then I'd bring it in I guess at about 2 minutes 30 and try to scout is there a third hatchery going down and let's try to get into the base and see are there lots of drones here or are there roaches popping out so about 2 minutes 30 we want to send that in and, and get some warning of that and you'll notice why didn't we build a bunker down here this is incredibly early guys now if this was a bit later in the game I might try to hold the natural with a bunker for sure there's 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 timings in this case, notice that we don't even have our reactor finished. I've got one Reaper and one Marine. If I build a bunker there, he can just walk past it and kill my reactor. And how am I going to get my other units in the reactor? I'm not going to have a full wall. I don't have any other units coming out just yet. So I simply through my game sense, I'm like, this is a very early push. Let's give it some context, guys. My opponent's hitting me with three roaches, another two. So five roach attacks coming off 16 drones. So you could benchmark this. Well, okay, if they leave the base at 2 minutes 40 with roaches, you know your opponent's effing all in. And there is no reason, no reason for you to need to secure this naturally. You can lift that, wait for a tank kick to get out. You could choose to use a cyclone. 
instead of a tank if you want cyclone better at mobility better for chasing them off if you've got the micro much more fragile and less damage so if you are being completely all in and they're rallying speedlings behind it the cyclone is not going to do that much to keep you alive we opted for the ultra safe unit the siege tank because it's just so good at, at shutting down an attack completely and we even built a second tank so i played exceptionally safe in this scenario so <clears throat> I did some damage to the Overlord just to push it back from the ledge, but I knew he'd be coming in with units pretty soon. So we just pull on up and we're going to make the Orbital and then lift that off after dropping a mule in the main base. Now we want to go tank. We're still building a starport. I'm already preparing to potentially lose some depots here. And remember guys, rally. If I rally this to the bunker, only one Marine can pop here at a time. And because I've queued two Marines at once, one Marine would pop there. The other Marine would pop outside my wall and die. So I've told my Marines to rally there, there, and then I can just, man and I could even shift click it from there onto the barracks as well, but I'm just manually putting them in the barracks. So <clears throat> hot little tip. Now, another way you could do it is I could rally straight to the barracks. If I build a Marine, wait one second and then build the next Marine, because then one pops out, walks towards the bunker and the other one has space to pop out behind it. Just a cute little tip, guys. Be wary of that. Now, if the bunker was over here, it wouldn't be an issue, right? You could just click straight on it. They'd pop, get straight inside it. Easy peasy. So, <clears throat> now I should have control grouped these SCVs. Looks like I didn't in this scenario, guys. Uh, but notice I've put them all on auto repair. Now your auto repair hotkey is your repair hotkey plus alt. So whatever your repair hotkey is, you do alt and that, and it'll turn auto repair on or off. Up to you whether you like to use that or you prefer to just right click them or tell them manually to repair things. Either way is fine, but we tried to repair the bunker. And then when he started hitting the depots, I quickly split them around to repair both sides. And uh, already he lost a roach and decided to back off. Three Marines and a Reaper scared him away. So just a nice tight response there, guys. And obviously once the tank gets out, I wanted to retake my natural as quickly as possible, but he actually, um, was kind of annoying and he hung around. I thought he was leaving, right? So I moved the tank forward and we siege up in a very defensive stance, first of all, to scare him back. Because if we siege up there, that's kind of scary. And then I, I siege further forward, but then he comes in and actually delays my SCVs. And I realize, ah, okay, he's going to avoid my tank on the high ground. We just need to A move it. I'll trade some Marines because at this point, it's more important for me to get my expansion up and mining. We lose a couple Marines there, which you might be like, oh, it's unnecessary. It's still a good trade for me. And notice the Viking, we queue this to just A move all around the map. I've already got it to queue there, 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 everywhere, right? So we're just saying, go kill all of this guy's map vision. And if he's being sloppy and left multiple overlords of the map, which he has, that Viking is gonna ruin my opponent's next macro step. And that's exactly what happened in this game. This Viking got maybe four or five kills. So the Viking is really nice because it stops them from spotting your high ground with any follow-up attacks with Ravages where they can then buy all your tanks, right? So if he was trying to break me here, he'd need to run onto the ramp before he could buy all this siege tank, for instance. Yeah, the default on standard hotkeys should be R for whatever repair is. But uh, so it would be Alt plus R, yeah. All right, guys, we're playing a mech and cheese player which is not a bad way to play StarCraft at all. We're gonna go, obviously, Barracks into Gas Geyser, very standard. We're gonna take our other gas, and then we're gonna go for a Scouty Scout. So we're doing our TVT, three Reaper, two Hellion Pressure. Now let's take these guys and tell them to go to the inside. Let's send a worker across the map, and then back home. And let's put these guys on here. And then we're going to put those guys on the other gas as well. One more SCV to be at 19 supply. And that's where we stop queuing SCVs. If you've queued too many guys, get rid of those. For very obvious reasons. That's when our barracks and our last SCV should line up almost perfectly. Orbital, Reaper, beautiful. Beautiful. We can attack this SCV because I don't like people being in my base. Get out of here. This is my base, you dirty. Gotcha. Dirty. And we are seeing single gas, which means doesn't matter. Let's, let's focus on our build. Factory and second depot first. So if he's not building a command center, it means he's proxy to barracks. But he is building a command center, and we even saw a marine. Now a marine loses to a reaper. So that tells us, oh my god, we can just jump into his base and try to fight him. Okay? So we're going to build extra reapers on Hellions, and we're going to rally them to the front of the base. 
We're going to use our depot SCV to build that command center. This guy will click back on minerals. Make sure we have extra stuff there. So we know command center. If there was no command center, we'd be looking for proxy barracks right now. Okay, continuing to scout. Because we saw the command center, we know we're good. Because we saw a marine, we know that we win any fight right now. Unless he has two marines, which he absolutely could have. And we're just going to run back. We build a Hellion now, another Reaper. We build a Depot, keep building our CVs, that's the most important part. Now we saw no add-on, which means he's still building guys. Let's put guys on gas now. And we can also build a Starport. Cue that back to mining. We're going to build one more Hellion. Oh, he's got a bunker up. Well done. Pull the yellow one behind the green one and go up there. Because I know he, after killing a marine, he can't defend both, right, guys? And we see a starport here. We want to go tech lab. We're going to rally to the natural here. So we're going to try to do a bit of focus fire. Do some grenades. And then we're going to run to the natural. And we're going to F2, grab our whole army, click them back here, and we can try to catch him coming down his ramp. And that should be game, guys. Now this was pretty advanced stuff, right? But this is because my opponent did not do a proper build order, okay? And that's why you can't get away with an expansion into just building marines. And this is a reactive attack. Many games, you'll see me sit back and not be aggressive with this, or just do a bit of a poke with the three Reapers and the two Aliens. But we explained our scouting here, and I think it's really important to explain how we can just shift-click those SCVs, exactly what went on. Now, you'll be like, well, Pig, you just miss macro really bad. I did, but with good reason. That was what we call good miss macro. What's good miss macro? So good miss macro is where if you're in a situation where you are killing fucking everything your opponent has and every bit of your micro contributes towards that killing, then it becomes worth floating 1200 minerals. As long as when you come home, rather than panicking and going, 1200 minerals, 1200 minerals, oh, I fucked up, I fucked up, which is 90% of players, right? The first lesson you learn in StarCraft is, number one, spend your money. The second lesson, which is the wrong lesson, which people internalize and it's really bad, is freak the fuck out rather than fixing the issue um just go fuck i should just spend my money better and the, the answer isn't spend your money better the answer is well have a system and the system here is what's next in my build order so what do we do we did a macro cycle as soon as i got back i built four scvs dropped meals queued marine tank viking and then i went what's next in my build third command center two more barracks what happens after that guys same thing every game double ebay double gas Keep building SCVs, keep doing our macro, keep building marines. We can go the double tech, la tech lab here, which I know is kind of derpy, um, but it is what it is. And then we do our next pressure. Why are we doing this pressure? We do this every game. Unless we feel we need to keep those Vikings at home, we always just queue Vikings. We don't even look at them. We've told them to land in the mineral line, both at about the same time. And uh, sometimes it does great damage. Sometimes it just scouts what our opponent's up to. It costs us almost nothing to do, guys. Almost nothing. I mean, I'm not even going to micro it just as a, a matter of point here because it's easy to get carried away after a really successful attack and be like, keep attacking, keep attacking. And it's like, no, 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 that's just a light pressure, man. Look, we already just forced mining time. We killed some SCVs. What are we doing? Focusing on our macro for a bit. And there's no such thing there as focusing too hard on your macro, right? So we've got stim and shields on the way. We've got lots of different things coming in. Notice that's fully saturated. And, oh, our third's finished. So remember, if we want to rally to our third, guys, select your command centers, shift click, or you can see that that is the lifted one. Notice it doesn't have a border around it. And then rally there. And we're going to need to set that as well once it's landed. Just keep that in mind. Now, it's time for Gary and Bruce to non-stop build depots because we have stopped building command centers. You get that kind of artificial bump early on in your um, supply from the command centers finishing. And then once that's gone, it, it doesn't kind of happen anymore. So what do we do when, when I'm making army groups, because I use stealing, I'll often just box it all, go, hey, that's the main army. Well, we're going to shift click main army, but then I'll control click the Vikings and shift two. 
One, two, one, two. Oh my god, fire alarm. Fuck off. Why? Every month. You don't need to test the fire alarm every month. It worked last month. Stop! Stop! It's very loud. Alright guys, so I'm worried about getting dropped. So we're gonna put some spotters out. Marine there, Marine there. Two Marines there, two Marines there. Two Marines there. So what did I just do? I just used Shift D selecting guys. He's gonna kill a worker. Good on him. Okay. We've got 4th and 5th Barracks. Do not stop Gary and Bruce. We're going to queue up their next two depots straight away. Um, all we're doing is building Marines here. Tanks, Marines, tanks. Get the gases. Let's go. Gas, gas, gas. And, oh, look, he's taking a third base. Cool. But we've already got so much more map vision. Whereas in that early stage, you might not fight for it. But these guys are drop spotters. Notice that's what those guys are. And then our other guys are map control lads. So we've got these two here. These two over here. Just going to see if there's that base. And um, obviously we want to attack soon. So you don't want to take too long with this stuff, guys. We're just queuing up a bit of extra macro. We're going, okay, put guys on gas. Put guys on gas. Get a guy ready to take a fourth base over there. Okay, let's go, right? We've got uh, two medevacs or one medevac in here. But other than that, we're going to go for our big attack. See what we can do with it. We're going to pull those guys back. Queue up more, queue up more. We're going to build a factory out here. Fourth base. Stop dropping mules. Why? Because we want to see where we're attacking and what we're attacking into. Okay. Scan there. Our opponent has tanks spread everywhere, which is interesting. But we can still get up in between the rallies for sure. So we're just going to use our Vikings. And then you can do things like this. So, in this scenario, if you've got complete air dominance, you can be a fancy boy. So what's a fancy boy do? You just say drop, click on the tank, and then you press the stop command. You only need to drop a few marines there. You don't need to drop a lot. And then you can go drop, click on that one. And this is why if you have air control, it's actually like disgusting because it's like, oh, we just broke his tank line. Cool, now we can move these guys forward. Stim in there. And as long as we get these tanks sieged up in a really good position. So he's got a tank on the high grounds. So we just want to avoid that. And there we go. And we're just going to hold position. Okay, guys? Tech lab. Three barracks. Planetary. Always transfer workers from your main to your planetary. Right? Oh, look. Our rally point's not set. By the numbers. Upgrade. Add these to the hotkey. Add these to the hotkey. Add on. Complete. Build three, four orbitals, all to turn into mule, mule makers. A lot of people go, I gotta kill you, I gotta kill you, I gotta kill you. If you've got a position, the pressure is on your opponent to break you, not the other way around. All you need to do, you do I could have done that on the minimap. I could have literally just said, oh, he might be inching a tank forward on me. I need to be careful. <clears throat> so what are we gonna do, guys? We're gonna take all these guys, and this is the new army. Okay? So none of those guys on the other side of the map are even control grouped right now, okay? Oh, nice moves. So, more reactors. 3-3, <clears throat> plus two vehicle weapons. Let's take the gases there. Build a few more SCVs, why not? Add these to my control group. We can also rally those onto the gases. Oh, check it out, our opponent's broken us. Very well done. <clears throat> So now these Vikings are going to go land in the back of his base. And these guys are going to run in here. And we'll see if he can defend that base. I don't think he can because there's only one tank. So all we need to do is get tanks in range of the command center. Which they are right now. And we can just click it and then pull back. And you can scan. Let your tanks do the work. And you see once you get a forward push. It's about set it up. Hold position the marines so they don't move command in front. Split your units off in multiple sides. And notice I'm not trying to slow my play down at all. I'm being abusive as shit, guys. And that's kind of my, my goal at the start of today, was to be as abusive as I can be. And just talk you guys through everything. So what do we do, though? Whenever we set up a push, hold position, 
occasionally drop a scan to make sure he's not sieging a tank there, okay? If you have Vikings, you can take those Vikings and you set them up on patrol just in front of the tanks, okay? That's going to mean you don't need to scan. But if you don't have air control, you regularly scan. Okay? Command center upgrade. Hold down the Marine key more than you've ever held it before. Look at that. Guys, a lot of people at this stage go... And they keep tapping. Stop tapping. Stop tapping. Okay, we're going we're gonna to point my mic towards my bloody keyboard. Don't do that. Don't fucking do that. You've got eight barracks almost all with reactors. Hold the key down. Build four tanks. Build some medevacs and vikings. Make sure you do that stuff, okay? Now, obviously we need to set up another push to try and actually finish our opponent. Um, rather than just toying with him for too long, we do want to finish the game. We've got all these upgrades going. And whenever you've periodically... You just grab idle workers, transfer these guys... And you just go, okay, cool. At this point, I've got full map dominance, guys. What's a way I could be safe, though? If we were playing slower, we'd build turrets there, okay? Why there and here? Because these are the extreme edges where drops could get us, right? If we're taking these bases, maybe out here as well on these edges. But that's something you always want to look for, okay? So, opponent's actually re-expanding really nicely. This is really good play for my opponent. Okay, so we're going to try and inch me tanks forward. And uh, we're going to use these tanks to get some nice forward shots off. Upgrade. Okay. We're just going to, as always, hold position the bio, right? Always hold position that bio. We're going to move these tanks forward as well. Okay, guys. So how do we finish this game? That's kind of hard, right? Um, it looks like, though, he doesn't have that much stuff. He's going to try and sneak a drop out the left, which is always fun. Um, we're going to just say, well, I've got more stuff than you. And at a certain point... More stuff beats less stuff, okay? So we're going to have all of our units ready. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up with a Viking land. Before that, though, spread your units out. So this is going to be shift click, shift land, stim, a move with the army, okay? Watch this. A move, stim. We set the fight up ahead of time. And look at that beautiful arc of units there. Obviously, you only want to do this if you've got better numbers, better upgrades. But once you get to better upgrades, you want to make sure you um you stop obsessing over, oh, I can't attack front on, right? Earlier, by default, our mode is don't just try to break a tank line. But at a certain point in the game, if you get enough of a lead or if they're spread across three or four different defensive areas, you can kind of consolidate all your bio on one area, spread it out, stim. And if they don't have a lot of stuff together or choke points or whatever, you can really overwhelm and get over it. Never. Anyway, guys, we're playing a TBT versus someone who is doing a one rax expand. So we've got another player trying to do a one rax expand. Now, is this necessarily greedy? No, it's not, guys. It's not. It really is not. So um, it's just that obviously our previous players um, command center upgrade complete were um, yeah we're, we're we're in that scenario. So now, guys, if you go across here, I think it's always worth it if they're expanding and you're not. Why? Because you, if you if you kill. If you kill the opponent, it's Reaper, you, you basically can break in. So we're going to come over from the right side because there's less chance of me running up a ramp into his dude. Right? If he's standing there, we're coming at him on even footing. Okay, so we got the Reaper. Hopefully we don't die for that. Okay, this guy always builds a depot there. We don't have the money right now, though. So notice we just kill we just kill a guy. And that's this is the advantage, because he can't take any risks. He can't take any risks, right? If he takes risks, guys, he's in big trouble. So we're gonna still make the extra Reaper, the extra Hellion, same way we always do. Probably gonna run past the bunker here. And behind this, we do want to make sure we make a starport. And Notice that you can kill your opponent with a couple Reapers and Hellions if they're just a little bit off. So, there we go. Now you might be wondering, Pig, this is brutal, this is unfair, or whatever. Uh, yeah, sure. It's TVT. This is why people hate TVT. But it's also why you shouldn't be doing a one rex expand unless you're an expert player. And in general, I hate the build order my opponent's doing for this exact reason. Now here's a trick, guys. You can put the Hellion there. And then your Reaper can go in there and try to kill some more stuff. But because there's a Cyclone about to pop out, we want to leave. Okay, so we're just going to leave now. 
Why are we leaving? Very simple and obvious reason, guys. Uh, Cyclone's about to come out. We've only got two Reapers and a Hellion. They will be defeated by that. But what a fantastic and ridiculous start to the game. Now, did I do some pretty advanced micro there? Sure. But um, the point I'm, I'm saying here is because he did a 1 Rex expand, is he defending here or here? It's hard for your opponent to do both. We saw it in the previous game. And we're not changging our build order at all. It's the exact same build order. What's the difference? The only difference here is how we use our units and we're willing to be a little more aggressive, a little more in our opponent's face and see what we can find. And that's about it. Otherwise, it is the exact same thing. Um, we're just using our units a little more aggressively. And if we happen to get a pick off early on, then we go, ooh, I got a pick off. Let's see what else we can do. And now we just swap into our completely normal play. Cyclone, guards the main, as always. Vikings, tanks, third command center, keep building SCVs. Build another depot here, as that guy's already queued back to mining. What's next? Well, we need two more barracks, but let's queue up units first. Queue up some more Vikings. And remember guys, we always grab our Vikings. So we grab you, go there, and you go there. And we go... Second army, drop army. Second army, drop army. Okay. Then we grab these two guys. Q barracks, Q back. Batch them up. Don't ever stop batching them up. On this map, I like to put it there because there's a nasty siege angle there. We like to kind of be positioned in front of that. We just clicked a mule over there. If you guys ever do that, be careful. So notice we're making an orbital there. We notice that off of our um, thing. We can tab between to, to make that orbital upgrade. Add to hotkey. More Vikings, more Marines. What else do we need, guys? Bad news. Double engineering bay. And if you ever are like wanting to just power up and not have to wait, go ahead. real simple. Stop building marines for a minute. You could even cancel these and go, cool, I've got extra money. Now I can just get all my macro done. Double eBay, double gas. Keep building SCVs and mules. Oh, awesome. Isn't that, isn't that relieving being able to do that? We're going to do that double tech lab. Just because it allows you to get everything done at once. Okay, rally to gas. We can just kind of batch things up, get it done, and then we can go back to marine production. So sometimes there's a real advantage to just skipping something for a moment in this uh, this matchup. See, I've got Ooh, looks like he doesn't. Anyway, guys, um, that's going to go there, and then this guy is going to go there. So we're just queuing those two Vikings to land. Let's obviously build a turret in each base, as one Banshee means there could be more Banshees. We can get stim, shields. We don't have enough gas for shields. Let's float that down. Rally to our third. We're gonna build some marinis. And are our Vikings doing good damage? They're doing some stuff. I'm still gonna scan just to check it's not mech. It's not awesome. So, just keep building these. We need two more barracks and then the armory. Remember, we always follow that same order, guys. Always the same order. More SCVs here. A few more Marines. And then we can go two barracks and we get the armory as well. Trying to get things finished before we go out on the map and start fighting. Are we sending some spotters out there? Yeah, yeah, we'll send a few Marines out. Why not? But we don't want to get occupied in fighting until we've finished more of our macro. Remember this concept, this concept of let's not get dragged into micro situations unless we have a very good reason to do so or we've already finished off. Oh, we've got all of our, our production and everything building. So right now I look at that and I go, oh, he's coming out on the map. Maybe we want to go fight that. No, nah, not really. We are still got to wait for these upgrades. Let's get these gases over here. Let's get the second factory. Keep building those SCVs. You can hover over the top and say, okay, we're almost full on SCVs almost Research at 66 complete. and notice we're keeping these marine spotters out what are we missing drop spotters so you want to put a marine there and a marine there we shift deselect come back to the center and that way we're not going to be surprised by any drops and people always go why don't you build turrets why don't you build sensor towers you absolutely can guys you absolutely can and this is about the point where we could start building some turrets but if you're good enough with your marine spotters Upgrade. you don't need to and that's something that's important because if you can not waste all that money and instead have more stuff and more vision on the map, you're going to be more aware of where your opponent's army is. And at this point, well, we've got one, one finished. We've got a bunch of tanks. We've got a good army. We can go out there and fight him. But is he pushing? No, he's not. Okay, so we're just going to send one Marine over there and then we're going to push the right side, okay? What are we doing, guys? We're building extra tech labs. 
We're going to try and take a fourth base down here as well. Behind this. And let's go up here. Try and... Okay, I'm just going to send one Reaper ahead just to see what we're up against. It doesn't look like there's anything here, guys. Oh, we can just stim. And siege of the tanks. I think his whole army's over there, so this is actually really good for me. Pull the marines back. We're gonna land these Vikings just to try and help our tanks survive. Pull our guys back over here. I notice we just kind of moved forward there. And we were scanning, we we're figuring out where his army was. We said, oh, your whole army's there. I can just do a lazy push. We're not expecting to be able to do this. If there was just one or two tanks, we would have been much more cautious. We would have set up the push, jumped home, focused on our macro for a bit. Transfer the workers, make sure these rally points are down here, grab the next attack. Maybe we're going medevacs, and our next attack is a doom drop on the left side, because his whole attention is brought down here, and that's a natural thing. Or you just grab these units, put them in a different hotkey, attack this flank. All you need to do, if he's left one tank there, you kill that tank, siege up in range of the command center, he's now got two problems to deal with. You could reinforce this push, but in general, always attack new angles, always open up new fronts, and that's going to be just the, the best way of doing it. So once again, GG, well played, a rather simple and quick TVT. We are getting a lot of damage done with our Reaper Hellion, guys. So in the next one, for the case of teaching and explaining and showing you guys, I won't be as aggressive with my Reaper Hellion. Um, we're just going to do one Reaper poke, pull back, three Reaper, two Hellion poke. Okay, guys? To keep it really basic. What do you do if they do the same early Reaper Hellion to you? So if your opponent's doing the same build order, I would still follow my plan exactly the same as normal. I poke with one Reaper, because I'm building extra Reaper and then a Hellion behind it anyway, pretty early, so I don't really worry too much. Just to, just to see what's going on. And, um, and we just follow the, the plan, right? We just follow the plan. So that's the build. Scroll down below. Attack timings. We'd still do the three Reaper, two Hellion attack, but we'd be much more cautious with it. So if we see he's got three Reapers, two Hellions, and we aren't winning the fight straight away. We don't, we see, oh, it's bad angle. We just click home. We just go home with them. And that's fine. Um, the reason I'd still go for it is because I don't know my opponent's going three Reaper two alien. He might've gone a quick factory, but gone straight cyclone. Maybe we get in there just before that cyclone's ready. Or maybe my opponent stopped at two Reapers, one alien. We're up a Reaper and a alien. We're just going to kill all his units basically for free and smash it. What do you do when your opponent turtles into battle cruisers in TVT? I'm Masters 2, says Miles. Great question, Miles. Uh, fuck their shit up, dog. So if you think about it, great, great question here, guys. Let's go down here and write some notes, okay? So question from chat. Check this out. What if they turtle up to BCs? They just turtle BCs. All right, so we're like, we're talking about like a Nathanius build, right, Miles? You still around, buddy? I hope you are. Um, Shregor, thank you for that sub earlier, by the way. Um, what are you guys in chat? Thank you, Chris, for the, the, the Prime Gaming as well. Thank you, mate. Welcome to the Pigsty, by the way. Guys, if you've all played against BCs as Terran players, what's the most frustrating thing about BCs? Let me know in the chat. Let me know so I can try to answer kind of everyone's concerns here, okay? So first of all, what if they turtle BCs? Well, so, so how do we categorize that? This is a greedy mech player okay so what's the first thing it's it's mech it's greed so first things first take more bases than usual take a quick fourth then fifth then mass orbital then go then go for the iron bank right right 10 orbitals so you have map hacks and endless money okay cool okay um what about dealing with the bc or us Minimal response to BCs initially. So what do we need? Just don't stop building Vikings, okay? But pig, they keep killing stuff and teleporting home. You have six, seven bases. He's on three, who cares? Number one, okay. Point number two, Add a second starport with Tech Lab. Start making Ravens and Corvid Reactor. Intercept. BCs coming across map. Drop interference matrix and kill the one to two BCs 
that can't teleport home. Now they can't harass without fear anymore. Okay. So that's that's it. All right. What's something else? Well, what if they keep getting across without you seeing them? Okay. Spotting depots uh, slash units constantly replaced on edges of map to spot BCs coming far before they arrive. The big problem is if BCs just float into a mineral line, kill 20 workers, teleport home before you even get there, right? But if you see them coming, your Vikings move over. <laughs> Easy. Just blast them down. They gotta teleport home immediately. You got the Ravens, they can't even teleport home. So that's, okay, so that's one thing, but you don't wanna sit there just massing Vikings and Ravens, okay? But Pig, Ravens and Vikings can't win the game. Great point. I can make these all bold. Great point. You're only doing this from one starport and then another starport. It's fine. Now, you might need to add more ports, double armory upgrades, etc. But this should be lower priority than getting that economy going, okay? So that's that's definitely one thing there. You can then swap into your own BCs. And win that way, that's one way. Alternate, easier plan. Make Vikings non-stop. Pump bio tank off three base. Never let them take a third base. They can't get more than a handful of units up. When they finally expand to third base, you can doom drop their bases. Okay, guys? You can just doom drop. Doom drop their main whilst pushing the front, right? 3M drops in mineral line just to be annoying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can... What do you mean? Yeah, you can just, you can just drop marines in mineral lines. I mean, you can literally pick up half your army, drop it in their main while the other half attacks their third base Thanks on the front. The they just can't box. defend it all. The problem with battle cruisers is they, 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 they don't, they're so expensive. Each one costs like as much as like, what, six Vikings or four Vikings or something ridiculous. It's like an obscene amount of money. 700 resources, a Viking is 225. So it's like three, three Vikings per, um, three Vikings is cheaper than a, than a BC. And if you, they've got four BCs, but you've got, you know, uh, say you've got 10, 12 Vikings, you can kind of just kite them down and, and gun them down without them really ever landing any hits. Um, but the whole point is it's a mixture of either exceptional greed into I'll just play late game, but with more upgrades and more stuff than you, or it's I'm not going to let you expand and I'm going to kill you and I'm going to keep dropping those mineral lines. You can keep dropping uh, even in earlier phase, you know, whenever BCs move out, you drop the, drop the heck out of them etc. Just keep smashing their economy. So we just want to think about this. A lot of people, they, 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 they go into a game against the BCs and it's very clear, if I had a replay right now of your average Joe player who struggles against this, that they don't know what they're doing in that scenario. They're even massively overreacting. They're just massing Vikings off two base for no reason. Well, you know, that doesn't scale well. What are you going to do beyond the Viking stage if they add Thors and Widow Mines and ground mech or whatever else like you know you got to build your economy as well or or they build a big army but they don't do anything with it and they let the bcs get two two upgrades and 12 battle cruisers together and they just slowly yamato everything down so just have a plan for these scenarios you guys will dominate it's all about having a plan and anytime you encounter something that's way out there um you've got to come up with a plan for it right and it's frustrating at first because you go i don't know what to do but the first step is making a coherent plan and then doesn't matter if it's perfect or not you make a coherent plan and you're instantly a thousand times better off against it and maybe it's a terrible plan because there's one big key missing piece of logic and that's fine because then i'll tell you what once you then realize after trying that plan and executing it a few times and it falls apart it's going to become very apparent what that flaw in the plan is and you're going to that lesson will stick with you and it will get burnt into your consciousness so you'll remember it forever so a lot of people want the easiest path to victory, but remember easy paths to victory don't teach you lasting lessons. You almost want to 
flail and burn in the pain at least a little bit of trying things out, having them fail, learning why by analyzing your replays, there's a, a, a bit of pain, a bit of frustration, a bit of grinding at the problem is gonna be very good as long as you're using your head and you're looking at the replays and you're not just repeating the same mistake over and over and over and over again. It's all about taking hard effort and repetitions and combining that with critical thinking and analysis. And that's very hard because people tend to go really hard on the analysis, they don't put the practice in, or they go really hard on the practice and they don't put the analysis in. They go, if I just play 400 games doing the same thing, I should be able to win, right? And I'm like, well, what? If you spent even 10% of that time doing analysis and planning, you'd, you'd be so much better. All right, guys, so we're getting into TVP here, and it's going to be interesting to see how well out to base bio tank push does. If our opponent plays mass charge lot, for instance, we might lose the game, and that's fine. I'm not going to adapt. I'm purposely going to kind of be a bit pig-headed with the build um, to make a point, which is you can still make it work if you don't fuck up early on which we very well could do. We, we, we might screw up early on. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, so check this out. We're going to go Barracks Gas, very standard play. Uh, Marine into Reactor is, of course, what we're doing. Um, we're not going to do the pause production build order that we were initially trying out uh, because we just realized, hey, it's, it's better to just get those Marines on time. Um, we're not rushing our bunker at all. We're, we're basically never delaying that. Let's take this guy. So as always, check up there. Check the gases. Check the natural and then come home and always pull an SCB to fight. So he's going to build a pylon there. Now that doesn't really serve a purpose, guys, but he is bringing more workers over. So it does look like we uh, have a fight on our hand. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and intercept that guy if we can. Just to make sure he keeps taking hits. And we're just going to build a marine and then a reaper. And we're going to block his expansion. Now why are we blocking his expansion? Because he doesn't have any buildings, guys. Command center upgrade complete. Your opponent doesn't have any buildings, and guess what? They are in trouble. Okay, guys, check that out. We could bring another SCV as well. Our opponent's build order is trash. Just keep fighting with your SCVs. There's no way to lose to this. Just a really bad build order. It doesn't really do anything. Um, Now my Reaper can go across the map and start killing stuff already. We can go for that reactor that we wanted to have. We'll build the command center on the high ground, right? Now remember, we know he can't have any units because we've seen a gateway, a gas, a gateway, two gases, pylon. We know that he can't be doing anything. So all we need to worry about from here, and let's just put those SCVs back to mining, shall we? Is just continuing our build. So factory, then starport, all that stuff. And check it out, he's got a cannon. So, he's got two cannons. Well done. That means, guess what? We can't do damage. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. We can't do damage with that Reaper. The whole build. <laughs> Calm down. Take a deep breath, guys. Keep in mind. <clears throat> Basically, it doesn't matter. Now, why does it not matter? The reason it does not matter is because our opponent just built two cannons in their main base. Can you guys think of a more Bronze League thing to do than to be building cannons in your main base? Of course you can't, because there's no such thing. So our opponent's build is already shit. Now, why are we building an extra barracks? Because we're on one gas, guys. We need to go three barracks. So we're modifying our build order to make a bit more sense for the scenario that we found ourselves in. And check it out, guys. What's that? Hello. So he was trying to go DTs. That's all fine. We can now take that second gas anyway. We can get another tech lab up there. And we can still build that starport. Okay. You can go there. You can go there. We can rally our stuff down. So we're still going to just check everything. We're going to send one marine over there. We're going to make a uh, just more marines right now. Um, I'd like to make tanks and so on, but 
We can't, and the reason for that is very simple, guys. We don't have gas. <laughs> so we're just continuing to scout around, see what's up. Now, why are we building an engineering bay? Pretty obvious, guys. I don't feel like building a, um... I don't feel like building a, um... Okay, so we're gonna go kill that now as well. That can be two tech labs, a reactor, a tech lab, and that. There we go. I don't feel like building a, um... A raven this game, guys, so... So we want to get rid of this if possible, but you know what, guys? It doesn't matter. He's on one base and he's warping in stalkers. I think there's only one thing that matters here, and that is... Survive! Add-on complete. So we build that turret we were talking about, just in case he is going DTs. I don't want to save any scans here, so... We're actually going to move him forward, make sure he's totally covered. We'll build a turret in the main as well. And all we're doing, SCVs. Keep up the depots here as well. And we're building tanks, marines. Let's get combat shields, more marines, and medevacs when we get a chance as well. Of course, SCVs have to take priority since we're a little delayed. My Reaper right now can have a little scout around and go, hey, what's in here? And it looks like pretty standard stuff. We're going to do, once again, another little search around. Just checking every single base on this map. And we're also going to cancel that engineering bay just to get a bit of money available. Because you guys can see that we are a little short. So we're going to get plus one weapons soon. Um, medevacs are probably more important. Keep the tank sieged up. One more depot down there would be great. Put guys on gas. What's that? He's got some zealots. Okay, so he's going to try and get us with... Uh, with the uh, zealots. Okay, that's cool. Zealots and stalkers now. What beats zealots? Just marines. Same thing we're already going for. We finally got the gas to build the uh, the medevacs, so that's good. <laughs> now, I'm a little worried about him dropping in the main with the prism, but I'm also like, eh, I can just stim up there if that's the case, you know? Oh no, my wall was down. Thankfully, we just told the bunker to stim. For those who don't know, bunkers can stim. Um, so yeah. World stuff. Um, yeah, so if your opponent ever builds buildings in your base, always respect it, guys. Um, I'm gonna point out some really important points in the early game. It's right on one minute. Cool. So even if you see a probe coming in, do not pull your scouting SCV to fight it. This is the biggest mistake you guys could make as a player. And um, we are actually going to change the soundtrack now, because as cool as that soundtrack is, you know. Let's go real world. It is a little distracting, but it's good for the shutdown. Now, do not pull that SCV. Always pull another SCV. At this point, I didn't know if this was a cannon rush, proxy gate, or just him trying to be annoying and get an overreaction. So notice I didn't pull too much. But minimap awareness is something that I know in this scenario, if I see a second probe, then I really know shit's going down. So if you watch this from my camera, guys, Pay attention to the minimap. What do we see? I didn't go and look at this and mention it, but I saw that. Okay, guys? I saw that on the minimap. And I immediately knew this is real. Before that, I was literally pulling like one or two more SCVs just to block any really nasty spots where he might be able to surround a cannon in there. I was just going to chase him with one or two, bring two, you know, maybe a few more SCVs. If I wanted to respect it, maybe I'd pull like three, right? But because I see that extra probe, I'm like, oh shit, he's bringing another probe. So I, I spotted that on the minimap and I'm immediately like, okay, let's, let's bring a few more SCVs. Let's see what that other probe is up to. And I didn't actually catch him. I was like, where is he, dude? And then he starts building gateways and stuff with this probe and I actually forgot about him. So I should have still sent an SCV to properly look for him. Bit lazy of me, right? A little bit lazy of me. But essentially we attack the pylon with a bunch of guys. Um, very important if your SCVs, like if I attacked with five SCVs from here, I'd have to grab three of them, right click here, and then shift attack it. And notice we kill the probe, so at that point we're like, okay, cool, we're good. Now we always build a marine first because marines build quicker. But at this point I cancelled my second marine and built a reaper. That's because I feel like the rush is already held. I've killed the probe, I've depowered the gateway, it now is not a threat unless it's powered. Awesome. This is great. I've also seen double gas behind it, which means he's not going mineral only. Double gas equals he doesn't have that much minerals for cannons and gateways. Okay. Our SCVs command yeah. center upgrade complete. 
Now we go down our ramp, we realize, oh shit. And luckily we just pull more SCVs because there's surface area on these cannons. There's plenty of area. We knew we could just pull SCVs to make sure that goes down. And this is a huge expense for my opponent. And as soon as there's no threat here, I send my Reaper across the map. And if he didn't build two cannons at home, he would take a lot of damage. And then what do we do guys? Normal game plan. Up to then, we've done a little bit of an adjustment to the build order. We've built an earlier depot. Our reactor, this is all before the command center because we're building units to survive. When you're building units, you need the depot. We want to get the reactor to build more. If we were under more threat, we wouldn't have built the reactor. We would have just kept building Marines, right? And then we build the command center. And what comes after the command center? Factory, second gas. This was the point where we made a variation of the build. We said, hey, I can't take my second gas yet. I'm going to have to go earlier second and third barracks and later starport. And that's totally fine. So I just, I just switched that around. That was a little advanced adjustment to the build order to make up for the fact that the gas was stolen. Our Reaper goes in, sees two cannons, and we know we've already won the game at this point because our opponent basically is going to have to do a one base all in and it's going to be so, so very slow. So I just need to kind of keep making sure I don't get surprised by anything and um, kick some butt. So very easy from there. Just bunker, wall off. We could have gone a Raven, but I figured, hey, I'll just build a missile turret in case it's DT. All right, guys, we're up against Uncle Festa here, who's in Master, has a Master's border. So maybe they've just dipped out of Master's three. Good stuff. All right, guys. So um, we're going to try and do a very two base push like we wanted to do it last game. But of course, we had to deal with some silly, silly business. So I think what's really interesting here is this is fantastic practice for learning how to adapt to to um to stuff oh good job dot telling you yeah always chuck it in the discord if you guys want it in the highlight clips put it in the discord clips channel and and it will make its way into the clips um anyway guys so we've got tvp this is great so far we're having a lot of cheesy protoss players throw crazy things at us and it's forcing us to adapt and try to find our way back to our build order in the heat of everything else going on so it's it's really cool because this is the hardest part of terran and we've got to learn those set plays. So you, you guys have got to remember that little set play I made in that last game of, okay, let's actually go three barracks. Now, I could have gone a straight three barracks build. If you guys have that in your arsenal, that would have been even better in that scenario, okay? Um, we're gonna pull two SCVs. Guys, why are we pulling two SCVs? Because he's already got a lot of damage going down. So we're gonna to need to really chase him off. Okay, there we go. I'm going to just swap him out for a healthy SCV. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm going to get that kill, actually. Very nice. Okay. Now, we did miss one SCV producing there. Whoops. So, I should have queued up more SCVs while doing that micro. It is what it is. But we killed him. Um, we're going to go Marine into Orbital. This guy will build our command center there. Now, obviously, I'm a bit delayed. Has he got a second gas mine? He does not. Looks like his gateways are over here, walling off that area. Just waiting for 400 minerals, guys. We're tapping that key, tapping that key. Add it, send to the camera location. Reactor goes down. And look at that. This looks pretty standard, right, guys? We've got two gases. Gateway, core, second pylon, all very standard stuff. The Nexus alone already tells us it's pretty standard, but you see the other stuff and it really kind of cements that, doesn't it? So there we go. We get the depot going. Um, keep building these guys. SCVs, of course. Um, make sure he's rallied. Make sure this guy's rallied there. Next up is going to be our factory. Now, our factory is going down at 216. That's a little late, but that's because he harassed us with a very early probe. If our opponent did not harass us with that, it would have been faster. So this is not me screwing the build up. This is, the timings are a little different, guys. A little, a little different, okay? Just a little different. Okay, um, bunker, bunker, bunker. That's what we forgot. I'm like, there's something I'm forgetting here. Now with this build, because we're going straight to three Marines and then straight to five, it's okay to have the bunker a little bit later because you can fight off one Adept or one Stalker. Obviously a Stalker is going to be very hard to micro against, but it, it also arrives a little bit later as well if they do go for that. And you always want to start a step towards Stalkers to really punish them for being on your side of the map. And then you can even pull him to the back and we can try to catch him out here with his shields regenerating out in this bush. Where is he? Looks like he's gone home, so that's fine. So what are we doing, guys? We're just going to be building marines. 
uh, rallying them to the main now. And you might be like, why are you rallying to the main? Very simple. We'll build a first deeper up here, by the way, before doing any wall offs. Um, Oracle could come in, right? Could come in just before the four minute mark, so it's going to be nice if we just make sure we're solid against that. Um, two Marines doesn't beat an Oracle, but it's the beginnings of a defense, and I'd rather lose Marines than um, other units. A few more SCVs queued up. Extra Hellion queued up. All right, guys. Now, I do like to send my Hellions across the map a bit early just to see if my opponent's gone for that quick base, right? we we'll build another depot there as well. And remember, we want to try to have it before four minutes, these second and third barracks. But as we said, everything's a little delayed. Opponent did harass us. And we're going to pick up that, tell that to go up there. And then we've got that there. Awesome tech labs. Keep building depots here. Use that in. Aliens are kind of grouping up here. We don't want to show them just yet. Trying to move on in there. And then we click the Hellions in. Same way we always do it, guys. He's got an immortal. So we're trying to just focus on the... Um... So notice we're just trying to focus on these guys. But check it out. We're just going to shift click those, and that should be that. Raven, tank, lots more marines. We then build our third command center, then our double eBay, then our double gas. And now our opponent's going to have a very strong timing that could hit us, right? So we need to be really aware of that. And it's okay to cut SCVs here, because that's a lot of gateways, right? So, let's put an SCV out front to see where he comes from. Oh, you're not very happy, are you? I, um, I have the language filter on, I thought. Sorry, guys. Hold on a second. Isn't there a mature language filter or something? Hold on a second. Yeah, just, there it is. It's up there. All right, we're going to turn that on. Sorry, guys. So, um... Did I, I microed my marines a little more than I normally would there, um, but we're getting towards masters, so I don't think that's the craziest thing in the world. Now, obviously, my opponent's build order was just really weak, and this is part of why we hit this pressure every game, guys, um, because a lot of Protoss players don't play the game correctly, so if you let them get away with it, it's a real big problem for you. So what do I mean by don't play the game correctly? I mean, he's only got four units. Now, he actually has four units. That's not as bad as I thought. A lot of players are worse than this. And we, we didn't hit the fastest timing. Like I said, everything's a little delayed, but not very delayed. We're about 10 seconds later than we could be. But basically, this is it. The Marines always go for the probes because they're fragile targets. That distracts. It forces him to react urgently. And the Hellions click in the natural. And this is just the way we do it. Now, the thing is, my opponent was trying to basically just gear up for an 8-gate uh, charge lot all in, right? They were going in Immortal. They were going to go a Warp Prism. Uh, after that robo and they were just going to go eight gate charge two mineral lines really clean simple build order if i don't pressure them that's going to be really hard to stop very strong attack um but only having this many units i always tell people you know 430 about 440 you should you should have six gateway units ready and that way you can have three stalkers in each mineral line generally um and, and and that sort of thing as well now obviously he also had an observer so he should have been aware either being active with his units or with the observer that i was going hellions but my opponent, remember, didn't send an adept to scout. They didn't see that I was going Hellions at all. They had no information about what I was doing, so they couldn't really respond to it. But if I wanted to, guys, I, I could have just picked up this drop and pulled it away, right? I, I really think just shift-clicking on the, the probes is the best bet, though. I'm trying to manually micro that, because he was so focused here. The big mistake I made, though, is I should have taken a moment to shift-click the clumps of probes Thanks with for the, the Bezos Hellions, box. because I literally just let them shoot whatever and you can see that they're not syncing up their shots all that well I mean it works out just fine but definitely um, if you pull those probes away the Hellions wouldn't have automatically chased for instance so we end up losing all that but obviously he's, he's just completely dead he didn't multitask at all didn't notice the natural and we do pretty well behind it now what are some little tidbits that we missed there so one thing is because we built this depot before these barracks, which is a mistake. Remember guys, the rule is always we build our first depot either in the natural wall or in this case we built it there. Then we go second and third barracks before more depots. 
We also, there's a little tidbit here. There's a few little pieces here that I didn't follow in my own build order. It's constant correction you gotta do, guys. And that is here, before even loading the metamac up, tech lab, tech lab. Tech lab, tech lab. You need to start those so you can get your tank and your raven out nice and quickly because that's gonna help you defend a counterattack from your opponent, okay guys? Then you load up the medevac, boost it across, send the Hellions in, and he should have seen exactly what was going on. He sees a medevac drop coming, sees a Hellion leave the base. He should be aware of what was going on, but he just wasn't looking. Um, but then we could have those tech labs already going. Look how delayed these tech labs are. They're about 10, 15 seconds delayed because of that. Now also, if these barracks started before that depot, they would be finishing just before I enter the base. Instead, they're just a little late. You gotta remember to, number one, as you enter the base, or even before you enter the base, you start a raven and a tank off your add-ons, number one, number one. And then once you're in the base, you wanna select your barracks and go tech lab, tech lab, marine, marine. And these are just little pieces you wanna do. You wanna queue up an extra depot before you go in. You wanna queue up extra SCVs before you go into this micro situation as well. Notice I didn't queue up extra SCVs. I got 500 minerals. I'm breaking my own rules. I knew I was gonna enter a micro situation here, guys. I knew. Four tech lab pog. That's right, pog. That's right, Scarlet. Noob friendly build. If we were soup, if if we're not building the Raven, we can obviously just put that barracks on that tech lab. But instead, we're just gonna have an extra tech lab for later that just sits there. <laughs> we will put a second factory on that later on. Um. Or or actually, our fourth barracks can go on that. Doesn't really matter. One of our fourth and fifth barracks is usually what ends up on that tech lab. Doesn't really matter. Uh, anyway, long story short, guys, what should I have done here before entering this situation? Taking a breather. Queue up four SCVs, two on each command center. So we should have had at least one more extra SCV queued. The Raven and the tank should be getting queued. Uh, so I think the SCVs and then the depot is probably pretty important. Oh, actually, the depot is not the... As long as you've got this depot building, it doesn't matter because you know you're going to lose a bunch of units and free up supply. So you don't need anything past 70 supply. You're going to be able to take a break from depots. So it's, yeah, start the ra build more SCVs, start a Raven, start a tank, start microing your push. And then pretty soon into microing your push, make sure in the midst of that, if you can select your barracks hotkey, tech lab, tech lab, that's super pro. We do find that a sharp opening pressure can just kill our opponent um, pretty damn well. Uh... I really think it's important to interact with your opponents, guys, because it's going to allow you to show your opponent's weakness. It's going to allow you to show when your opponents are making mistakes. And if they're being too greedy, you catch them out. If they're all inning you, you spot the all in. In that case, it was a bit of both. I spotted the all in. So I, I was building a second bunker. I was on nothing but unit production behind that because I knew there was an all in counter attack coming. But I also killed my opponent before they could even warp in their first round of zealots so their all-in was basically killed before it got started so the power of aggression it's it's scouting it it, it finds weak points in your opponent's play there's so many bonuses on? to that and that's not a big all-in that's three hellions and eight marines in a medevac and i'll tell you guys when i'm doing that at my skill level do you know the number of times i have just pulled back with the medevac because their stalkers are on the edge of the base and just gone home and they've got a unit in the wall and they went the Mahalians in, so Mahalians just go hide in the corner of the map. That's a regular situation for me off of that TVP build order. That's a regular situation. So, yeah. What if your opponent has no weaknesses? Then we die honorably in battle, fighting hard and strong. We charge and impale ourselves on their, on their defenses. But we do it bravely and without fear. For we are warriors. So remember guys, TVT, after we get our second gas, we want to send an SCV to scout. We're going to go for the 100% reliable scouting here. Just check the gases and then come home. Let's go there. Make sure both of these SCVs are mined to the inside. Scarlet taught us this, by the way, guys. Scarlet literally taught me how to make my Terran better. What, what a gamer. Um, and since then, my Reaper is often not six seconds late anymore, believe it or not. Still, still a few seconds late. What's Pretty regular, on? if I'm tilted. But otherwise, it's 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 okay. Um, you can just go back there. What if your opponent? <laughs> Already read that one. <laughs> guys, don't forget to repost your questions at the end of games. Ooh, it's a wall off. Okay, guys. So we're gonna hang out here now. What's the advantage of hanging out? 
Kill the factory, by the way. It's a little late. We can see if a marine would have popped out by now. So we know that it's a reaper. We don't know much else. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to hide behind the base just to see. Mule's coming down. Ow! Oof. And we're just going to have a little look-see for any... Um, any close by barracks. Just in case there is a proxy nearby, right? And this SCV is just checking for that command center coming down because it should be coming down pretty soon. And it looks like it will be. And, yeah, it is. Our SCVs are under attack. So he gets to kill that, but that's fine. SCV ready. We know we're not being all in, right? We build a depot once we start Hellion production. We can now group up our Reapers. And we're just going to chill for now. And we're going to wait for three Reapers, two Hellions, and then we will go across this map. Once you've started the depot, you've got all those units building. Of course, what's next? Starport, the moment you get that money. Once you start your starport, guys, you can rally back onto gas. So as I pull one off minerals, rally one out of the command center. We always like to just use units that are popping so we're not messing with the natural um, saturation. And we're going to come down here in case he's trying to jump into the main. Just because I feel a lot of the time when I move out with a three Reaper, two Alien, my opponent might like come in with their own, their own little jump in pressure. And because you have no units right now, that's really annoying. If someone comes in right now, you're very annoyed. You can even raise your depots if you want. Oh, so check it out. My opponent has the same units as me, guys, and I think they won that first trade. So we're going to pull into a more of a defensive stance now. Looks like we are playing identical build orders. So we're just going to pull back, play real safe, guys. Now, if you want to be a real Chad, you repair that. Notice we go repair, and we just right-click back. And we're also setting up a bit of a concave. So if they come in, all of our units will attack at about the same time. Now, if they jump in the main, we will have to react to it, but I'd rather have all my units together. If he gets in and kills an SCV or two, that's annoying. But if I lose my Reaper Hellions in battle, well, that's, that's where we actually could lose the game. So always prepare for the worst case scenarios. Depots on the edges, spotting, remember? Ooh, that was meant to be a scan to see if my opponent was going Banshees. That, that mule there, remember, it's always the first one in there. Now we can come up, like I said, he can be annoying. Gets two SCVs, good on him. Oh, he's just right there, is he? Okay, very well. Very cute. Third command center can go down. We can send the Vikings down both sides of the map, ready for a bit later. Keep building SCVs, Marines, all this stuff. We've stopped building depots, so it's time to call in a supply drop to make up for that. But look at this, Cyclones covering that side. Armies here, we've got a tank on the high ground. We are solid. We are rock solid right now, okay? As a Liberator comes into our base. Oh, that's okay. Hello. Ready to blunder. Ooh, okay. So we're gonna quickly tell these Vikings to land just to pull his attention away from me. Oh, what is this? My man! We're F2 A moving right now, guys, including A moving the SCVs. If your opponent jumps on you by surprise like this, you've got to act swiftly and just pull the boys. If you let them sit there, you arm and R, you lose the game. But if you just decisively drill the shit out of them, you're fine. Now that did pull the Vikings home, though. So we've got to tell those Vikings to go back. And that is the sort of scenario where early game TVT, guess what, guys? We've hit that MMR. Our opponents are doing clever, fast attacks. It's time to start using F2. That was the perfect example of a scenario. You just got to aim move it. You've got to deal with that instantly. Your units aren't super organized right at that point. We can just kind of shift click the SCVs. Look at this guy. He's being really annoying as well. Minus. Double eBay. Into the double gas. We did the gases first, but you, you guys know what we're meant to be doing there. We're going to leave the cyclone in the main for the rest of this game. And uh, everything else, we're just going to leave over here. 
Keep building the SCVs. That's very important. Let's put guys on gas straight away. We've got to have that double tech lab in a moment. And we really need the gases, don't we? So actually, let's let's not build those Vikings. We're going to take a little break in Viking production, guys. Right, we're going to let him free, because that's, that's going to trigger me all game otherwise. Actually, we're, we're not even going to build that there, because that'll just trap more Marines in the future. Um, we want 1-1 one, one upgrades, and we want stim and shields, and then we can restart Viking production, okay? Just a, a quick little lesson there on what's most important in the game. And let's cancel those SCVs. Let's move that down. We want that. Do we have more barracks? Yes, we do. We're adding them to our hotkey. Okay, guys. So what are we going to do? We're going to put two Marines out there. Two Marines out there. Um, Thanks for the at this stage, box. you could get Doom Drop. So here's a little tip. One Viking on the edge, one Viking on the edge. If you don't have enough Marines, that's probably the best usage. Oh, of that. My man. What is this? Oh, shit. My opponent's really good, guys. We're dead. Uh, I think. I think they're really. Yeah, we might be dead. Made for battle. Fight or flight. Gangway coming through. So all I'm doing right now, guys, is focusing on supply drops, marines, tanks. Supply drops, marines, tanks. Supply drops, marines, tanks. Let's pull the SCVs here. Once again, F2. Pull every single SCV down here. Notice we moved into melee range so that the tank could not defend. We just sacrificed every SCV to stay alive, okay? Every SCV. Once again, be decisive. We're going to F2. We're going to grab the Vikings, put those on a different control group. And guys, we're going to reestablish that map control. We're going to put the Vikings on the edges again. Because like I said, guys, we could get Doom dropped at any moment. Now we need those reactors. Right now our marine production sucks and it's hurting us, okay? We're going to, once again, send some more units forward, including a Cyclone this time. Upgrade. Look at that. He's really trying to push me back. This guy has gone to base. Now, how do we know that? Because there's no way he could have this many more units than me and have squeezed the third command center in. Now, was my macro perfect this game? Far from it, guys. Let's get that armory so we can continue upgrades. But it really is uh, a situation where, unless we've really royally fucked up, we know that he went very two base. Now, you might look at that and go, well, he's got a third. Does he, though? Remember, our third was already fully saturated. So he is actually only even with us after all of that damage he did. So that's something for us to keep in mind, okay? Now, we've got a few medevacs. We're going to go back to Viking production. But we've got no map vision. Remember, I was skipping the turrets in those earlier games. We can't afford to do that. We need sensor tower out here. Um, we need turrets on the, on the edges. We're going to build turrets up there. Because in this scenario, it's different to those earlier games where I was in control of the pace, where I had map control. And this is what I really want to teach you guys, is it's it's a very different game based on how things have gone. And I don't know where my opponent's army is still. It looks like it's all there. Okay. Now notice we're going to leave a marine spotter out front. We're going to try and put these guys there. Looks like he's going to the left, right? Okay. All right. He's he's not pushing. He knows he can't find a way in. So what are we doing, guys? Fourth base. Let's try and get down there. What's our target? So we're going to attack him there, chase him away. Oh, not able to kill him. That's fine. Okay, guys, what are we building? We're building a fourth, and once again, missile turrets in front of it, okay? So we're going to leave those two tanks there. So what did I do? I just stole those. I just dumped those, those off my hotkey. We're going to leave a tank there and a tank there. Everything else is going to be on our hotkeys. And obviously we've been on the back foot for a little bit, guys. Oh, he's got an army on the left and on the right. Okay, we're going to leave some Vikings down there. What is this? If we can jump on part of his army, that would be great for us. 
Now notice my opponent is really tactically focusing on picking me apart, but if they just leave sections of army, it's important for you to go clean them up and then quickly get back before the other prong of his army can do what it wants to do. Notice we just lost a unit there, so we scan him and we say, okay, let's get back down there, no worries. And we can kind of track where he's going. We can say, okay, cool, he's going to go down there. That's okay. We're going to go three more barracks and then there. And we got, the, we got the siege up, so we're going to stim and then pull back, lure him into me tanks. We put the Vikings in front. Beautiful. We've stabilized. We've regained control of our side of the map, finally. Let's get 2-2. Two, two. Let's get plus one vehicle weapons. Let's build some more stuff. Let's build a planetary down here, shall we? Let's make some, some mules, because we're going to just defend for just a little bit. Now, let's also forget, never stop putting pressure on your opponent. So we're going to go down that right side. See if we could do something there. And we're just going to cue that in the back of his natural, okay? Love the content. Now, right now, we're in a bit of a standoff there. But that's a pretty small army, as I say that. Big army comes over. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, that's not even that big an army, bro. Let's get into that way. Coming through. Notice we're cancelling those Marines because we want to make reactors, okay? So what are we going to do now, guys? We're going to just take all these Marines and those Metamax and we're going to send those off. That's a separate mobile squad that's going to be a fuck squad. These guys are dropping at the same time and I don't really care if they lose. We're just trying to be annoying, okay? We're going to try and drop them, I don't know, back there. Just trying to create as many problems as we can. And then... Whenever your opponent's being really annoying like this, this is what you do, okay? You just start spreading your tanks across the map. And your Vikings in front of them. And then we just swap into air. So we go starport, 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 command center, command center, command center, command center. So there's a sensor tower up here, is there? Yes, there is. So what are we doing? We're running away. Okay, that's fine. And these guys can now go drop in his base, okay? Because remember, we came out of that base and we know there's nothing there. Behind this, we can start thinking about pushing through the middle. But for now, we're just going to go in the back because he's had map control all game. And what do we see, guys? Same problem that I have. Map control players don't build sensor towers and turrets because they're relying on that map control, aren't they? Now, he did some good focus fire there. Got rid of some of his own, uh, some of my medevacs before they were able to unload. Uh, we just kind of end up trading off there, so nothing amazing. I thought I'd be able to get on top of them a little bit harder. We can just tell them to drop there and then forget about them. Okay, so we're gonna now take our map control and go, all right, build some libs. We're gonna push through the middle of the map, okay? I'm going to start trying to zone him out. Now, he's got way more Marines than me. We've got to be very careful. Ah, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so he's got way more Marines than me, like I said. It's not going to be the greatest, is it? So we're trying to just figure out, hey, what's he doing? So we're going to move these tanks forward. We're just trying to constrict them. Okay. So the base there. Okay, no worries. Because I've got the air advantage, he doesn't. And we can just split some marines off to the left. Some tanks over here. And look at that. We can just kind of say, hey, oh. Okay, we're building Vikings, Medivax tanks. Great, great attack from him. As we said, he does have more marines than me. So we're holding down the marine key right now. Liberators are awesome because you can just queue them in. So we're literally, we just did a queue to the left, move to a central point, and then siege three bases at once with those libs. And what else are we going to do, guys? That's a planetary. We could maybe drop behind it. Don't think it's a good idea, though. Let's build some more tanks. Oh, that's a planetary. These guys are orbitals. We completely forgot to do any transferring of workers because our macro has been a mess this game. What are we going to do? 3-3. Three, three. We can get plus two vehicle weapons. Okay, these libs ain't going to do anything because he didn't. He left 30 marines in his main. Well done. Um, let's grab. Okay, let's go. 
boy. Command center upgrade complete. Fighter, we've been waiting on We're gonna pull back. Mineral field depleted. Mineral field depleted. So we're just doing a big old A move because it felt like we were sieged about the same time as him. So he cleans up my bottom side with his better upgrades. But it looks like maybe we just have enough money that it's okay. That was a bit of a sloppy fight for sure. At this point, we want to kind of say to ourselves, hey, re-establish map control. So what do we do, guys? We're pulling back to a safe place. We're sending marine spotters everywhere. Put a guy there. Let's put two workers on gas. Put them there. Make sure that's there. And try to, whenever you're rich, just build more command centers. Because if we get planetaries up on those, that's awesome. And we can send a liberator this time. We'll go down that right side. And we'll try to come in from there and siege that up. Okay. Now, I don't know if there's more units down there. There is. Okay, so we want the sensor tower there. Oh, we're going to have to cancel that. Okay. Oh, he's going to fight me so we can stim Amu. So we waited for him to fight me that time. And it looks like that fight went really well for me. So that looked out like it was really good. Now notice we're trying to build a sensor tower down here. Because we, we've lost too much map vision, okay? So we're going to grab our units again. And we're going to attack down here to the south. We're going to kind of go, where's your army? And we, we realize, wait, we just killed his army. We didn't lose many units. I think we can finally push across this map. And if we can just get in range of that planetary on, the, on the, that side, that'll be awesome. Now, my army's not that big. We know he's looking to fight me, so he's going to come for it. And we're going to have to land the Vikings on top. So we're going to try and land the Vikings on top of his tanks. Whenever you've got air control like that, there's nothing for you to shoot. Definitely the way to do it. And then we can just kind of inch these tanks forward. And we're going to just put those all there in range of the planetary. And then we can... We're shift-clicking the rest of our army so we don't interrupt the tank's order to siege up, okay? Oh, get back, guys. Oi, get back. So notice we've got some libs coming in as well. Notice I've been using the libs mostly for their harassment potential. And that's just because the game's been very messy. But we're just going to hold position, guys. Always hold position for everything that's not a siege tank. We'll try to clear this out. And these want to be planetaries. So whenever you... Notice I've shift click those, hit the planetary key twice. And that's awesome. We can build some turrets around them in case there's like libs coming in. But otherwise, guys, at this point, you can do leapfrogging. So if you've got air control, which we do, we're going to keep building tanks and libs. We're not really building marines anymore. We can basically say, okay, we've got Vikings up front. He can't defend that. So as we inch our tanks forward, we can kind of go, okay, let's try and... Command center upgrade complete. We can try to siege the libs. Now, obviously, this is a bit of an orgy because he actually tried to break my tank line. But the liberators there are going to be really effective. Really well played by Brisaiden. Um incredibly aggressive early on and really caught me off guard my build order was really thrown through a loop and um and i had to adapt on the fly but there was two key points there this first push is actually really crucial so he distracted me with a liberator which i dealt with very poorly did a reaper poke in got two scvs run away look at that beautiful maneuver just a light pressure and then the liberator comes in and i actually I thought I had more marines than I did. So I walked my shit through the lib zone really badly there. Huge. What do we do, guys? If you, if you screw up in game, always map out the response. Pull workers away completely. Shift click cyclone. Should be on... Third hotkey. For me, it's my third hotkey, right? Now, what are we shift-clicking the cyclone? To 
to dodge the circle completely. Okay, that's going to be huge. And you can even shift hold position, okay? Why shift hold position? So it doesn't go into the circle. And then send workers back and that's it. Don't fuck around with trying to defend a liberator with marines, guys. Don't do that. Don't do it, guys. Especially, no, I, I don't know why I thought I had like eight marines here and I could just tank it and kill it. And it's like, no, you can't. <laughs> so it kills all four marines and I lose some SCVs. And I was like, ah, so this was a massive screw up by me. This tank also could have been sieged slightly to the left. So not the best tank location. And really good awareness of my opponent to, to basically hit this really sharp little push timing and avoiding the tank on the high ground, getting this, this tank angle in range of the command center. So I have to break it. It's huge. And um, this tank could have sieged a little quicker on the low ground as well. But yeah, we didn't even see this coming because my opponent did such a good job of keeping me busy and setting up for this push. Beautiful execution by my opponent. Beautiful execution and put us in, really through the ringer. So finally the Viking, the Cyclone, clean that up. But then suddenly I'm like, wait, what the hell? Oh, he's shoving right in and trying to kill these units. And this tank was sieged up, thankfully. And I immediately pulled back. And then I went, wait, there's tanks here as well. And you're going to see I instantly F A move my S A move everything here. And then I F2 A move everything else as well. And that tank did get enough volleys off to save my bacon. So I lose a bunch of SCVs here, guys. But it's much worse if you let the tanks stay, okay? What if my army control is equivalent to a bronze player, but I'm in masters? I guarantee you it's not the equivalent of a bronze player, but in that case, you'd just take a few more safety precautions. You can always adapt your play to your level. So you might be like, oh, I don't put the tank here. I put the tank here. Like I put both tanks there or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe you have something that gives you a bit more vision of the map. Maybe you push your opponent's Hellion Reaper back rather than letting yourself get bullied back, you know? If you're like, oh, I can't let myself get put into a defensive stance because I'm too slow to react. Well, rather than building the reactor and the tech lab, I should have just built another Hellion and a Reaper and said, well, if he's matched me, I'm going to build a fourth Reaper and a third Hellion and I'm going to go out and kill his units and then I have map control. Easy solution. And then that's going to give you map control. You're not going to get surprised by any move outs, right? There's always simple adjustments that you guys can make every single time. Every single time. This was awesome play though. So check it out guys. We lose a bunch of SCVs, but my macro is a bit better than my opponents and we've got a third CC finished. His is just starting. So as I said, he's doing a two base play. Now I actually spotted this, but didn't notice it at the time because I was reeling from that push. I spotted that his third just started, but he's already got very quick stim on the way. So I should have known, oh shit, I've got to be very turtly and safe. Um, I got to be really safe here, really safe. So Anyway, this Viking harass, which got delayed a little bit, probably would have been even stronger if they went in while he was attacking me. But I did F2 to, to, to kind of panic uh, react. We still get a bit of damage there, which is great. And remember, I'm up eight SCVs here. So from here, I'm missing tank production. That's kind of nasty, guys. It's okay to miss Viking production, but not tank production. You don't need that many Vikings. You got a few Vikings out, unless you're in a Viking war with the opponent already. It's okay for your starport to idle a fair bit. <clears throat> if we wanted to be more advanced, we'd even use the starport after it builds two Vikings to like swap off the reactor and build some more add-ons and that sort of stuff. Yeah, sure, Asher, bro. Hmm. So... My man! After that, I was like, holy crap, that's a lot of Marines, right? Now, I was lucky. He didn't actually have stim on time. But if my opponent had just dropped two tanks and eight Marines down the backside, my Viking, I think, would have spotted it, thankfully. Because remember, I knew I didn't have map control, so I was just keeping my tanks in this spread, sieged up position. A lot of the time, I don't even keep my army sieged. But in this scenario, I have no map vision. So we're playing, we're adapting to the scenario. If we have no map vision... And then especially once I see how big this army is, I'm like, whoa, I've got like no Marines. He's got a whole pack and medevacs. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I'm trying to like, just make sure I don't get overwhelmed. And yet another point here where I'm like, this is a really scary attack. We bring some tanks down. Now, arguably I could have already brought that tank and those Marines down, right? And that would have really helped me out here. 
but instead I end up going land my Vikings and pull every SCV into this fight. Every single SCV, like anything I can do to just not get overwhelmed here. And I did do some fancy micro where I moved that Cyclone right up to the tank just to make sure it didn't get killed by it. Now, I think that's two fights where I've pulled the boys and that seems really bad, but notice we're equal on workers. So the first one, I should have been behind on workers, right? My opponent just messed up his macro a bit. But this one, actually, it made a lot of sense that it's like, wait a second, you kind of know your opponent is actually gonna is actually gonna be a bit behind because he's made a third command center so much after me. So this is why I was explaining, even in the moment, my like that doesn't feel great, but as long as I heat keep hitting my macro, I hold down the SCV key and and try to get, you know, back up to that three base stage, I, I it might be okay. And I was saying that, and I was like, he doesn't have a third. And I was stimming these Marines in to confirm that, because we're sending Marines around the edge. Let's confirm, how all in is he? And I see a third, but he's just landed it. He's just transferring workers. He doesn't have many SCVs. I've got nine, 10 workers on my third. So I actually could say at this point, hey, we're pretty even. Because I saw, okay, transfers coming in. I'm like, oh, we're pretty even. In hindsight, I was actually even ahead. And this is just a really interesting little thing to, to note. As that Marine does get another SCV, denies some mining. Um, pulling SCVs into battle is so important. And you see it in high level TVT, where one of them does a big attack and the other guy has to pull workers and loses a whole bunch, but then he counterattacks, does a bunch of damage. In this scenario, I didn't get the chance to counterattack ever. It was just me on the defense pulling workers and then pulling workers again. But you can see that I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead a little. Even though there was a massive break between 1 1 and 2 2. My opponent has not even thought about building their 2-2. Even though they made an armory, my 2-2 I think might end up even slightly quicker than theirs. Maybe, maybe not. But the important thing is that I actually ended up very even. I was ahead in Vikings and tanks, but down in Marines all game. So I had to play very defensive. I have to be sieged up. If I just run my army into his army, I lose. So we started building sensor towers. We started building turrets. Because if he drops us, guess what? Our tanks aren't sieged. So that's a big, that's a big issue. It's a big issue. All right, guys, same build order here. It's a bit of a small map, so we've got to be real careful with this one, right? We don't want to get caught out. Now, all we want to see is double gas or single gas from our opponent, right, guys? That's all we want to see. Now rally to that one. Rally these guys to the inside. Roger. Fourth base. Natural third, fourth, fifth rally point. Which right now is our add-on swap area. Our add-on swap staging post is over here. Orbital plus Reaper on the way. Is he going to let us in? He is. And he's gone reactor first, which means, guys, we're going to rally our first Reaper straight across the map. In there, we're going to see if we can kill that SCV building the factory. Why? Because we know he... Can't, he's not building a Reaper right now. He's building a reactor first. So if we can get in there, kill the SCV, building the factory, um, that'll be awesome. Okay? Now, you could arguably just go reactor here, but we're going to stick to the build order. We're not going to do an advanced reaction. We're just going to stick to the build order, because in general, until you have more game knowledge, sticking to the build order wherever possible is the best thing to do. Now, we're going to have about seven seconds in this base, maybe 10 seconds if he starts his uh, Reapers straight away. So we've got to get in, kill a worker, get out. That's our mission. If you see a reactor first on a small or medium sized map, do not stay too long. Let's see if we judge this correctly, guys. Oh. All right, we're just gonna leave. We force some mining time. That's all we're getting. Because I don't want to, I don't want to risk dying. We'll try to go in with the two Reapers. Let's build that tech lab. And we're going to try to see if we can grab a sneaky uh, snipe on the worker. Because he might be worried about the ledge. So if he's not at the front of the base, we get a cheeky snipe on the SCV building the command center. And we run away. Here we go, reactor and tech lab. Now we're gonna go defensive because he's got a reactor that could be building reapers non-stop, remember guys? Uh, we forgot to put guys on gas after starting the starport, so let's do that now. And what are we gonna do? So he could be building like six reapers, a whole bunch of stuff. So we're gonna try and use this ramp to help us defend. And uh, he also might jump up there, so just be wary. 
Um, okay, keep building SCVs there. So we want to go marine production. We've already got a cyclone on the way. What? SCV ready. Add on. There we go. Some marines are starting. As is the cyclone. These guys are going to defend the front. If we see him come in, why am I watching this? We've got to run. We've got to drop grenades, pull back, shoot, pull back, and get back to the safety of the the cyclones and the marines potentially, because he might be able to drastically overwhelm us. Likewise, he might be able to jump up here. So let's actually get on that ledge, just so that we can pull right back. And you know what, guys? Let's do it. Let's keep everything together here. Building a tank, building some other units. I'm going to build a depot at the front, just so we see if he does come in there. We're going to leave one marine down there. And it looks like we're getting past this stage without anything too crazy happening, guys. So, I guess this is it. I guess we're just fine. So, we're going to actually go out on the map now, have a little look around. With a, a Reaper up there, a Reaper up there, and a Hellion in the middle of the map. We're going to put our Cyclone down there. Now, I forgot to scan to see if my opponent is going... Um, I forgot to scan to see if my opponent's going Banshees, guys. So we're just going to build an engineering bay just for safety. Just a little piece of safety there. See what's going on. And we'll drop a scan in a moment just to confirm what we're up against. Um, we will queue that single Viking, but we only built one this game. So just one Viking to go on in there. And we've got some pretty good map vision. It seems like this is just going to chill out this game, honestly. Doesn't seem like anything crazy is going to happen. So we'll drop one scan, as I said. We see extra barracks. We see a third command center that was down insanely early. So my opponent's actually played mega greedy, guys. Okay, so we're going to grab my whole army. And we are going to attack the front. Now, why are we attacking the front, guys? Because we saw his third is finished when mine's just started. How is that possible? Well, I don't know. All I know is he didn't build units non-stop while I did, right? That's that's what we can surmise. I built units the whole time. I had no money for a command center. I'm making tanks and vikings, so we're definitely going to go for this couple of tank uh, viking push. Now, I accidentally pulled an SCV here. Where is it? There it is. I don't know how he got on the hotkey, but he did. Let's build two more barracks. We want to keep the build going behind this. Now, as always, you want to look for the reactor. If you do any push like this, but... Oh, check it out! We might be able to just kill him. So if we can kill that raven, that would be great. I think we already killed it, maybe? Okay, so we're going to see if we can get this tank up there. Can he squeeze past? Yes, he can. Transformation system. We're going to try and build two more barracks, two more, whoops, two more evades. Already got those gases up before even the barracks. I took those gases before I normally would, didn't I guys? We messed up our build order. And we've also got one engineering bay already. What is this build pig? Follow your build, bro. Well, anyway, we're in range and as you can see, he, it's kind of on him to break me here. So notice, he, he does win the Viking fight, but only barely there. As long as we keep up our Viking advantage, we keep baiting these Marines into this stuff. And this is awesome. So, let's go, guys. We've got Stim, Shields. We've got 1-1 one, one upgrades. Make sure they're both hotkeyed. And that should be game. And this is how you punish someone who doesn't build units non-stop. It's why the most fundamental rule of TVT is never stop building tech units in the early game. Number one. Number two. If your opponent doesn't build those units or if they're very, very passive, take your units and go attack across the map and see what you can do. Um, in this case, we had confirmation that our opponent was insanely greedy off that scan. And we just said, oh, okay. Let's see if we can do something. And then we caught him even moving outside his base, which is obviously exactly what he shouldn't have been doing. Thanks for the Bezos box. So we're just going to use scans now because we are lower on the Vikings, I think. And we can try to move these forward as well, I think. Yeah. Cool. So we've got Stim, we've got Shields. We've got these. Let's build an armory on the way as well. And 
Um, you've kind of just got him checkmated there because he just can't do anything. Second factory, keep building SCVs. We've really got to queue that up. We kept queuing at the end of production cycles. He tries to inch a tank forward, he's going to come into range. So because I've got a third landed, we can do that. And you could even be like, well, because I'm spending so many scans just to keep vision, we'll take a fourth, make an orbital there, just so that we can have more scans available, right? And in this case, we can like poke forward with the Vikings. Is he moving his tanks forward? No, he's not. He's thinking about it. So you can, at this point, if you guys ever feel like you're sinking too much APM into it, just go home. There's nothing wrong with going home. A lot of people get real nervous here and they start fucking up everything else. Oh. So he's trying to fight me now. But that's a bit of a desperate attack. Because he knows he's got to do something. So some people go, I've got to kill him, I've got to kill him. And it's like, no, you don't. Just if, if you're feeling too pressured to stare at that, just disengage. Pull your workers home, you know, um, keep your upgrades going. Uh, keep building your depots, keep building your marines. Just focus on your own macro, swapping to medevacs, whatever it is. Um, so I'll show you guys this build order. We recognize that with a single scan. So my opponent's build... Because um, we delayed we delayed his command center, but then he got supply blocked a bit there. So he missed some production rounds. So if we look at the production here, even though my opponent had the earlier reactor. Ah, I see. Okay, so check this out, right? So he squeezed in a very early command center because he was supply blocked and his command center was so late. So because of the mixture of that, he just wasn't able to keep producing because he was supply blocked um, for a bit. And then also that meant he wasn't building SCVs either. And then he gets supply blocked again as well. So basically, yeah, he ends up just kind of behind on tech units um, because squeezing that command center in was right when he, well, he should have been building depots there. He should have been keeping up tank and Raven production. So this is why when I push out, right? Cause I scan here and I'm like, how is that finished? What the hell That's such a fast command center, man. Um, I'm like, how is that already making into an orbital? And we kind of catch him, and he's just uh, a little bit behind on the units. Now he's not massively behind, as I surmised. And I, I wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna meathead you, right? I was like, I'm gonna try and just push in, and get tank sieged here, and kill the reactor in the depot, and maybe force the starport to lift, and just be annoying. Like that was my whole point here. Okay, let's like, you know, if you've got a third that fast, you're definitely not gonna have more army than me. And you can say, I'm up what two marines, one reaper. Uh, and one Cyclone. So I do have one more tech unit than my opponent, but also I've gone Vikings instead of Raven. So if I get an aggressive position, I can potentially kill the Raven before it does anything. And um, my opponent here, we just caught being a bit too greedy, loses a tank and some other units for free. And then because the tanks aren't in position, we're able to get in range of the command center. We've already killed the Viking before it can do anything. And then we're like on top of the star, but it's just game at this point, right? Um, as a general rule, if you want to simplify this, Whenever you have three siege tanks and at least four Vikings push across the map. This is written in the build order. Go to TVT game plan. That's our little air superiority push. Because we're skipping Ravens. If we can take a fight where we've got the... We surprise them with it. Their Ravens might die before they even drop any energy. Hmm. It's kind of a waste if you go reactor first, decide not to go aggressive with it. I don't think it's it's too bad, because remember, all I did was pull a few SCVs off mining. So I actually think it's okay, guys. I actually think it's totally okay. Um, because it's scouted, your opponent expects the heavy aggression. So it kind of makes sense, right? I was there worried about aggression the whole time. Opponent just turtled up. Kind of makes sense. Oh, we got a TVZ! The rare Terran vs. Zerg match. Heck yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, we've got a rare Terran versus Zerg match here. I'm really excited for this one. Um, so let's try and have a nice solid opening and see what we can do with it. Uh, it's BDGM doc, guys, is the uh, command. Though, though there are links to the document within the YouTube video description. Um, the document itself is a B2GM doc. It's, uh, it's in the stream title, but I know the stream title is pretty long, so... Obviously easy to miss that. Or have it not even display on your device, depending on what you're watching on. Whenever I go to TVZ, I just panic. It's a bit too rare. Yeah, you might want to go for a real simple game plan then. Well, yeah, like keep it real basic. So we're playing against Frosty Phoenix. Um, awesome. So this guy's going to scout. Is, is there an expansion or not? And then come home. Now remember, if it's pool first, we're going to double back with that SCV to try and scout if there's a roach follow-up. That's a nice way of doing it. 
We've done Zerg Bronze to GM. We have not done a Protoss one yet. So if you guys hit B is Z or Z B to GM, uh, that'll link up the series, and that's got links to the document and everything as well. Yeah, the Z's at the start of it. You got it. You got it, chat. Oh shit! I forgot to send my SCV down, guys. This command center is going to start about three seconds late. See, it should be down about 138, 137. It's going to go down 141. A little sloppy there. It is what it is. It's not going to absolutely ruin the build order. But do try to be tight on that stuff. Command center SCV upgrade. plus Something. Mule. Cure Marine. And... The factory. Oh, I accidentally pulled two workers off there, guys. Whoa, hello, that should be finishing right now. Okay, it is finishing. It's just a second after we left there. So we went back in to double check. I was like, am I getting pull firsted? Is there going to be a few lingies trying to sneak across this here map? The answer is no. So if you want, you can queue the marine to just kind of look for overlords around your natural. Maybe get a little bit of damage on them. Probably won't make a difference, so it's not really high priority. So remember guys, we have about 10 seconds of micro. Now if you hug the drones, they actually can't do their tricks in order to build buildings. We're gonna get out of there when you jump home. Put guys on gas if you haven't already. Oh, we can actually be very annoying. Because that's just two lings. And go starport. We drop these around. This marine will patrol the edge for the sacrifice overlord. Reaper's gonna run home just for a second. Actually, we haven't seen a third base, so he's just gonna bounce around and look for if there's a third base and where it is. And we also want to make sure that rallies down there. Let's just start our depots early because I have a tendency to forget it when I'm commentating as I play. I uh, have a very big tendency to forget that. Guys, we have not seen a third base yet. So is my opponent just taking a third that's late? Are they two basing me? We don't know yet. So we're just going to send a guy through just to check. Are you still mining gas? What's going on in there? Are oh, my hellions just chill? Liberator's coming out. And we see, what is that? A baneling nest, guys. So we're getting baneling busted most likely, right? Because two base baneling nest, right? And not many drones on the natural confirms that. So we're going to get our marines down here. Um, we could always just wall off, potentially. You know what else we could do, guys? We could wall off with an engineering bay, right? Now, we haven't started our third command center yet, so that is an issue, guys. So remember, if you if you kind of hold position in choke points like that, it's actually very hard for them to get through. And there's no reason to freak out here. Just keep third command center, second and third barracks. Big job. I'm waiting on bad news. Are you ready for this? Check it out. Get back to the choke point. Talk to me, Bob. Light it up. We can kite this for days, guys. So he does some damage there, but he's not going to kill the aliens, and that's all fine. Now, we could have forced him to do a bit more there. I think this is totally fine. Now we can grab these guys, just repair that, repair the wall, and just keep building, keep building, keep building. Double eBay. It's tempting to go across the map, and I probably could burn a lot of drones, but I don't have the APM for that, guys. I don't have the APM for that. I'm not. I'm not Maru. Just make an orbital. Keep making all this stuff. We've got double eBay, double barracks, all this stuff's on the way. We're just gonna send the lib across. Nothing else, okay? Now, maybe we will. Okay. 
And you know what? I'm not even going to cancel the double eBay I made, guys. So we've got a wall off. We've got a tank that's out on the high ground. There could easy be another wave. We have no idea. Okay. We're just microing that one lib, and then the Hellions are going to come in. And we're doing this. Remember, Marines, tanks, medevacs, all coming out behind us. He's got mass sling still. He's planning for another wave. Okay, that's fine. One one upgrades. Armory comes down next. We haven't started that yet. We haven't put our gas guys on yet. He's literally just got another wave of Ling Bane all in. Our Hellions will see it move out. He's got a Roach Horn. And we've got tanks on the way. Extra tank. Two more reactors. You know, there's there's just no way to die here. All we're doing is just getting insurance. If I run into a spine and a mass of Zergans, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to achieve anything. But if we just chill, take a third, there's no way to lose. Combat shields, medevacs, more marines. 2-2 two, two when that finishes. Guess what, guys? We're not building depots right now. That's a problem. Okay, let's go build a depot wall at our third. Let's drop a supply drop to tide us over. And let's go. Okay, cool. So we've got a tank up there. Let's let's put that tank there. Actually, you know what? Let's get all of our tanks down to the, the low ground. We are so far ahead. There's no way that our opponent can make us afraid anymore. No way! There's just no... There shouldn't be any fear here at all. Rally to the third. Hellions out front. Medivac, Spire. Vehicle weapons on the way. Um, yeah. And... Beautiful. We can rally onto this area. Our opponent, maybe they're trying to expand now, but it's like plan C. They're trying to make mass ravaging Bane on two base. Okay. So because they're trying to transition, how do we know? There's a few more drones and they built gases. So well done. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to do an F2. We're going to make Hellbats. And we're going to send all these guys across. Now, because we're attacking, guess what? Our rally is our defense, okay? In case we get run by it or anything like that. Oh, hello. I'm going to go across the map because I'm a Chad. Um, yeah, so that was just a Baneling boss. So, what are the two little advanced scouting tips that we do, guys? Now we're in Diamond 1. 3 minutes 30, we confirm there's no third base. So we jump in, and we've queued our Reaper to do a loop behind the main into the natural. Okay? Super basic. Super basic. Alright. TVZ. Three minutes 30, no third base. And you guys could put these all underneath your notes for each matchup as you stack them on until they become automatic. Q Reaper to jump in main and go around behind mineral lines. So what do we do, guys? Still mining gas. Right? Could be all in, you know, Banes, roaches, or tech is what that means, right? Roach horn or bane nest equals aggression. Lack of drones equals aggression. Okay. So these are really obvious things that we're looking for. Sometimes you get denied, you don't see anything, and that's fine. That's totally okay, because you're gonna dive with your four hellions anyway. And, and that can give you the info. Um, and as well as you can always, if you don't confirm what the Terran's doing and they just really turtled up, you can always just go, okay, I'm just going to play three barracks. He's on two base. Right? So if you can't verify anything, you can just play three racks before third CC and start bio tank production, then add later third CC. 
you're still in a good spot because Zerg doesn't have a third base. So you can just play it out from there. Super easy. Super easy. Yeah, that engineering bay in the wall was meant to get blown up by another wave of Banelings, guys. That, that engineering bay in the wall was meant to die. But yeah, obviously, what did we see in here, guys? I saw opponent was still mining gas. I saw a Baneling nest. And I saw a lack of drones on the natural. That should be full of drones by now. So I saw literally every tell that says, yeah, this player is trying to kill you. And I just pulled my Hellions back. Now, I could have microed my Hellions against the Zerglings a little bit more and not even bothered walling off and just put the Liberator on this ramp. And that's probably the easier way to do it. I think that's actually the easier way. Rather than walling off the natural like I did, guys, honestly, this ramp and this wall off is already such a kill zone. If the Lings try to flood you on there, they just get wrecked. You always leave that depot raised and you just kind of hold position your Hellions there. I did it on this depot a few times. But it's really nice just, just you know, hey, you chase into my aliens, you're going to get gunned down, man. As long as you shoot, pull back, shoot, pull back. And it's just it's just rhythm, the micro of getting the move and shoot and making sure you don't get surrounded. Um, obviously, don't take unnecessary risks. Uh, you don't need to, like, chase the Zerglings too far. Because if you chase 10 Zerglings all the way over here, 20 Zerglings could be coming from behind to surround you. And then you're in trouble. So you don't want to chase too far, but you do want to be a bit more free-flowing with going in now. You see what I talked about? The Lings can't get through there if you hold position correctly. And as they clump up for it, they're going to get blasted. So Hellions are the counter to Zerglings, so we shouldn't really be too intimidated, especially if we're pumping more Hellions and a Liberator behind it. Like, if I was Clem, I would just go out there with my Hellions and just fight. Pull back, fight, pull back, fight, pull back. And the moment he turns around, I'm chasing him. I just chase him anywhere he goes. And I would basically just try and kill everything. And as long as I keep building more Hellions and I have the Liberator for insurance, he ain't getting through me. He ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, an Engineering Bay, guys, fills up three. It's three by three rather than two by two. And you see it has 450 more hit points than a Depot. So Engineering Bays are the best wall off structure. The best hit points for cost. So we didn't get the depot up, which is kind of bad, but it's also not the end of the world. He gets to kill some SCDs. We don't really care too much. As long as you don't lose your aliens, you're fine. We did spread our SCVs a little bit. And the opponent at the end of that is at 23 drones versus 29, 30 SCVs. I've almost got a third orbital up. We are so far ahead, it is silly. GG's. Uh, would it have been better to keep the whole position in the wall with the aliens? Um, well, the Banelings and the Lings, the Banelings can bust through that. You're not going to kill the Banelings in just one shot. You'd kill some of them, but there was enough Banelings that you do have to pull back away from them. Yeah. How can you tell he didn't kill enough SCVs with the Banelings? Because I know my opponent, I, I remember I saw he had six drones on his natural. So my opponent is on like barely, not even one and a half bases of economy. So the fact that I kept my natural half alive, meant I had at least equal workers with him, felt like I had a little bit more, and indeed I did. And on top of that, if you so if you have more workers, you're, you're already miles ahead because you're Terran, you've got mules. And I'm building libs, I'm building aliens, so I'm building better units. My opponent didn't have evos, doesn't have extra hatcheries, so my opponent's lacking all the pieces a Zerg player needs. Third hatchery, uh, upgrades, lair, gases, evo chambers, all those things are missing. When your opponent doesn't all in, they're, they're cutting a lot of things out of their build. And he has less workers than me. Oh, and also I had a third command center about to finish, which meant I was going to have triple mule dropping. So I was so far ahead, it is not even funny. My opponent was absolutely dead after that Baneling push failed. Very good question. Very good question. Um, yeah, you really want to understand those builds from your opponent's point of view. And in that case, their build, they are in such a shitty position, man. Can't get to my SCB, get wrecked. So check it out. We're just going to bring a fresh SCB to fight him. Because he'll come back once he's regenerated. He's just like, Oi! Where are you at, probe? Oh, maybe he's actually pissed off. Maybe. Uh, we go marine, sorry, don't we? Orbital there. A few seconds late. That's alright. We see a Nexus before Cybercore. So we don't have to worry about any aggression from our opponent, guys. And that's awesome. So our command center is not super on time. But this is just what happens. If you SCV scout... And they probe harass you and force another SCV off the line, and that matters. Pylon, Pylon. So we know our opponent is playing two Pylons in their base. 
which is awesome because that tells us he can't be proxying or if he is it's a less efficient proxy i went back to check he took his second gas just because that's more bonus information it's not the most important thing in the world but it's nice to know and we're gonna go depot and what's next guys you guys know what's next same every single time victory second kiss <clears throat> so, we want to do a two base push this game as our follow up, but we're not getting there because every Protoss player dies to our opening harassment, guys. So I'm hoping we can get there. I'm hoping we can we can do that five racks. Um, but we've been killing people before we even get there, so it's it's kind of funny right now. Now I've skipped my bunker, guys. Is that a bit greedy? Yeah, let's build a bunker anyway, even though it's a bit late. Um, we knew. My opponent went command center, remember. So it's kind of okay. Because it's like one of these things where it's like, well... You know. Is it the most important thing in the world? Uh, we could have skipped the those two marines there. If we had our bunker on time. So I think I prefer putting the bunker down straight away. Because then you can actually have the money to start your orbital on time. Whereas otherwise you can't afford the Hellion. And the bunker. And the 4th and 5th marine all at the same time. So guys, we're going to send that Hellion across just to see what's up. Um, we are, of course, rallied to that natural now. And we'll build one more Marine here. Another Medivac. And, like I said, always build a Depot there. And we've got another Hellion there. So we've got two Hellions. We like to put those on the third bases if we can, guys. This better be good. All right, guys, let's get those two barracks before four minutes. We want to we want to try and get these before four minutes wherever possible, remember. Okay. Ready for dust off. Ready to raise some hell. Pedal to the metal. I'm waiting on you. All right, guys, what are we doing? Ah, oh, tech lab, tech lab before. You meant to go to the double tech, tech, lab, tech lab before loading up. Bit of a mistake there. It is what it is. Build an extra depot. We don't need any depots after that though. And let's go third and fourth gas. Um, pretty early there. That's probably earlier than we need it to be honest. And we're going to click these in. Tank, Raven. Light it up! So we're going to try and focus fire some units. Now, obviously, there's a big counterattack coming, guys. So we've already got to think about that. We're going to try and leave because he's got Blink. Oh, we didn't click the medevac. We're very lucky. All right, we're going to try and get home with that, guys. Put guys on gas. And okay. Add on complete. We need one engineering bay, which we forgot, guys. Now we're building marauders. Okay, so we're gonna get a tank on the natural. Four marines. Everything else here. Now what? We're trying to boost home because those stalkers could get here very quickly, remember? We're trying to build more depots as well right now. That's gonna try and go build a reactor somewhere. So we're trying to see if there's a, an observer. Is there an observer out here? Doesn't look like it. That's good. Now we'd like to make stim and shields because we're worried about a stalker counterattack. That's why we're focusing on unit production first of all, okay? Now, if you want to guilt build tech lab reactor, you can do it, or you can even put one of the barracks on here. But it's not the most necessary thing in the world. Oh! Look at that. You see him. Make sure you click it in case the stalkers come forward, and they do. Okay. Okay, we're gonna stay here. We put some units down there, some on the high ground. We want plus one, guys. Do we have stim and shield started? Did we have enough money for that? We did. Awesome. Let's keep dropping mules right now. We don't need any more SCVs. We're at 44. This is where we cut. Okay, fantastic. Now, why are we not repairing the bunker? Because I'm gonna sell that soon anyway, guys. We don't we don't care about it, okay? We're building mostly marines right now. We do want one more tank. Come on, buddy. Hurry up. Gary and Bruce, keep building, bros. There we go. One more tank. A few more Marines and Marauders. So we just want one more round of units if we can. 
before we move out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move out very cautiously here. Let's get that as well. Why are we moving out so cautiously? Because, yeah, check it. He's, he's out here. So we don't want to lose units on the way out. We also don't want him to blink past us. So you can wait for stim is one way to do it. And then the first time you show that you're moving out is basically you stimming on their face. That's one of my favorite ways to do it because if they're not really quick, you can kill like six stalkers and it's just pretty much game over right there. So we're going to grab everything F2. As I said, let's just do a stim, just chase him off. We can do a bit of stutter step forward as well. Look at that. Kill a few stalkers. This is huge. And then you can just basically go across the map. We can drop a scan there. So that is third. No, he's taking the third to the left. Okay. Now you can bring SCVs. We're not going to do that style, guys. We're going to do the style where we Research don't do that, okay? Complete. And we're going to push right up towards the natural, actually. So what are we doing, guys? We're going to take these two guys. Click there. Deselect. Click there. So splitting these marines up. Look at that, guys. Big, big, big army, isn't it? So we're going to try and chad mode this. Where we anti-armor missile and then stim, A move, siege up. Okay? And because we have the critical mass of bio, we can just A move that and win the game. Now, if you want to be super pro, you can do things like stim, A move, control click the marines, move them behind the marauders, right? So show you guys that again. That looked, that looks kind of fast. Stim, A move, and then... Sorry, what, they're already... Basically, like, stim A move, control click the marines, and then clump them up again, and the marines are behind the marauders. So you can do that even before you stim A move, I guess. You could be attacking, right? Say we're attacking to the left side, and we're like, oh, okay, click the marines. And what's better than clicking on screen? Because clicking on screen is really hard to do. Click down here. Click the marines, click and bind, and then click them. And check it out, the marauders are in front now. Especially if you're going up against Colossus, really important to have the marauders in front. Um, but in general, it's just nice to get the marines behind them. Now, if I was more afraid of that army, if that army was bigger, how would I have done this push? And I was already thinking about it because I already have my tank positions memorized for every map, guys, because I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm actually good. Now, if I'm super pro, I do this. I push out with my tanks in my medevacs, and we actually just drop them right in location, and we just siege them there. Now, why is that so pro? We put the medevac in front. Look at that reach. So, then you can kind of just move forward with your bio. You split half of it there so zealots can't come around and just kill the tanks for free. And then these guys just go down here. And your raven's there and you just go, cool. And you try to like move in and you just, you just attack the army. And as they get aggroed in, they're getting baited into tank shots. And you can just keep baiting them in. And then if they keep just pulling way back over here, well, you can start hitting the mineral line. Or you can even just split the units down here and go, oh, okay, well, I'll come in here and... I'll kill this mineral line for a bit. And the moment they react, you quickly run back up here towards the tank so they can't corner you. Or you pick up and boost away if you have to. And at this point, because you're all in, you could rally across the map. Now, I didn't rally across the map because I had no map vision, guys. And I was planning to just go in stages. But if you're going to rally across the map, do me a fucking favor. And once you get rid of those stalkers, just do this. Just grab a few marines, dump them, and just check the edges, okay? What are we checking for? We're checking for zealots waiting to run in. We're checking for pylons and gateways that have been here all game. We're checking for warp prisms. We're checking for 10 zealots that are waiting for our army to move out and then are going to run in and kill all of, our, all of our SCVs, okay? And if you're very blind and very unaware of that possibility, you can do it like pro gamers, right? And they can have their units rallied to this depot. So if zealots are coming in, it gives them a very limited area. Two zealots wide can attack at once. And by rallying onto your depot, your units are automatically solid there. Now, you don't want to be like this where the zealots can get through. You want to be like that. Right? You want to be right up against it. Right up against it, and then they can't get in. GG's. What do we got, guys? Oh, another TVZ! We're playing against uh, Chalmers. Superintendent Chalmers? What is the fastest of DTs? I mean, you could have someone do it off like 12 workers, right? And it's just what's realistic. Well, what's realistic? Depends on the build order. Two base, one base, whatever. I mean, someone proxies their uh, single gateway in your natural, builds their Twilight Council on that gateway, and their DT shrine. That's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty fast. But if it's a realistic build, if it's often expand. It's gonna change a lot. 
So Hu Shang does a 425 3DT drop. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you do a build like that, that's that's pretty brutal. Um, those sort of build orders are usually really good against. Uh, if it's executed like to that level of, of detail and execution oh shit i didn't scout yet so What's let's send an scv actually that's completely standard isn't it go over there see if he's expanded come back um yeah yeah if you get it by dt's at like 425 like a super pro timing that's fine like that should just never happen on um on ladder for you guys like i think i find most players out there are kind of worried What's about the most on? extreme example of a timing which hits them one game. Um, and I find a build like that usually is so corner cutting that like they struggle with basic things. Oh, hello. Okay. So we're trying to just see if there's a roach ward. We didn't quite get to see it, guys. Okay. So we're trying to just play with the Reaper at home here, which means we don't have any scouting, which is definitely a problem. But because we only saw two lings, you know what, guys? I'm actually going to go straight across the map. So the reason is, I went straight in. I don't think lings snuck across before I got in there. And I think a, a marine can handle it. So I'm going to go to the front of the base and just confirm there's no roaches coming, okay? Because that's the real threat right now. And this is already almost finished, so... No such thing as going across too early. And it is roaches! Alright, guys. Let's do this. Add on complete. Okay, let's go up here. Let's get the starport. Let's get a bunker. Awesome. So easy peasy guys. Uh we just get marines. Um we build I guess we could have delayed our starport and then we could have got a unit out quicker. Um we'll we'll do a cyclone this time just so you guys can see the cyclone variation. If you're super pro, you send the Reaper across to either block Command their third. Upgrade complete. SCV ready. Or, um, actually, you know, we're going to leave that there, guys. He needs to force that to lift. Gangway. Come Let's get that guy back there. Who wants some? Let's get that Viking that we like to do in this scenario, guys. And let's try to even SCV ready. rally our workers down there, shall we? Big job. Optics Optics let's check this out. We've got a Cyclone out. So, yeah. Ready. Let's build a tank just for safety, because remember, he could always be all hitting us. We'll drop a supply drop. We're going to sell the bunker on the high ground, so we are being a little greedy. And the Reaper's going to go across the map. See if he can spot the third. See if there's any other units coming. Um, we've got a Viking here, which is, of course, just going to clear up the map. We've got a Liberator that'll come out behind that. And we've got a deeper that can go there to complete the wall off. So Liberator will come out behind that. We've got a tank. It's going to go down about there. Oh my god, it's a Nidus Worm, guys. There's an Overseer in our base. Maybe not a Nidus Worm, but definitely a little scary. Because we saw a changing in our base. That's how we know that. If anyone is wondering. Yeah, we'll kill the Overseer, which is cool. But I think it's just muters, guys. So what we're going to do is we'll leave one Marine there. Everything else comes down here. Liberator is going to go there. We've got three barracks on the way. Got five barracks on the way, sorry. I accidentally built two sets of barracks. Scan. Roach Warren. It's Mass Roach. Okay, it's Mass Roach. That's good to know. Something liberated? Of course. Okay, this guy's gonna come in there and siege that up. Viking is gonna go around the map and see if it can kill some stuff. And okay, yeah, we're just in a completely normal game now. We can turn one of those into attack lab and go a few more marauders since we're up against Mass Roach, guys. So we're gonna actually mix in marauders off two tech labs rather than go pure marine tank. Just just to kind of adapt to this, okay? So we're building double upgrades now. Um, 
we can get these guys on these bases. That means you can go there. So I can go there. Okay, awesome. And then we can just wall off with the depots. You can see the Liberators coming. It's just being annoying. It's not really doing much. We're building tanks instead of Widow Mines. That's always the change. Remember, whenever we play against Roaches, that's always it. Now, unfortunately, our Liberator will die. A really good play by my opponent to transition here. So we're going to really have the game just slow down a little bit and um, make sure we start concussive as well as combat shields. Now, we would like to get extra gas because we're going multiple factory tanks. So the gas is on this third. Normally very unimportant with Widow Mines. Much more important in this scenario. Now, because Roaches can overrun us, we're keeping our tanks up on the high ground. Up there, or actually, I'm going to move them down here. We're going to keep them here. This is going to be my strong point here. No depots. We may need to lift our base just to survive. Um, you guys who watch a lot of my stream know I shout at Maru about putting his uh, tanks out in the open and then dying to Roach Ravager because of it. We're not going to make that same mistake, okay? It looks like it's still no hive, nothing like that. It's kind of no lurker den that I can see. And what we can do is we can do things like, okay, Ready for dust off. I'm going to send a single marine drop around just to see what's happening, gain some information. We've got to keep building this stuff up here, vehicle Research weapons, complete. keep the tanks always guarded. And we're going to just keep a few marine spotters around in case an attack comes in. And you can see here, he doesn't have a lot of creep tumors, right? Research complete. Ready for dust off. Gangway coming through. Okay, so we're gonna put those guys there. Somebody, get me out of this mess. Whoops, it's queen. So we're just gonna pull back with this drop. We'll just drop down there for now. Now we're gonna keep dropping, right? Just don't expose your tanks to anything, okay? He doesn't have anything mobile that shoots up, so we're just going to go back and drop there again. Try and build a fourth, but build it in your main, because remember, this is an area you can abandon at any point. Always set yourself up, ready to abandon that area, and you'll be in good shoes. Okay, so these guys are going to stim and click in there while I micro these guys. Okay. Now notice he doesn't actually have he doesn't actually have uh, any drones on his fourth base. So this is not about doing big damage, guys. It's about keeping track of what my opponent's up to. Dropping off. Somebody, get me out of this mess. Here's your big job. Gateway coming through. What's going on? So we're going to come back in, try to catch those queens, rinse and repeat. Still building that tank count. We're building towards a 2-2 tank timing. This is what you do against Roach play, guys. Just keep everything at home, build that tank count, because tanks are very hard to replace. And we're just going to kind of pick off the creep. This Roach Ravage is still just being occupied completely by this small little squad of bio. We're just going to keep doing that. And guess what? We're almost maxed. So, three more barracks with tech labs. Can float the fourth down. Keeps trying to catch me with vials. He finally gets one. Good job. But at this point, guys, we have our army up. Okay? So we're sending some spotters out. Notice how there's these changelings everywhere? So we're just shift clicking those guys. So this drop is going to go in and distract. And that's a distraction squad. He swapped into Banelings, interestingly. Okay. Ooh. So we're just pulling back, staying with the tanks. I notice these guys have found an undefended mineral line, which is cool. And they're doing lots of damage, because remember, no anti-air. He's now built Corruptors, which are a really good unit. We're not going to win in the game, though. So we're going to shove this whole army forward because we want to get in range of just forcing him to take bad fights, guys. We're 
We're going to keep those guys back there just so that there's layers of bullshit for him to kind of impale himself on, right? And these guys are just going to pull back. And I'm just going to say, cool, he's afraid of me. If he gives me that respect, he's not just trying to jump on top, then we'll start attacking a bit more aggressively. So we're just clearing up all of that creep spread. We're going to send more down here. How has he got Broodlords? What? What the fuck? Uh, this is the last thing I expected, guys. Oh my lord, what a Chad. Chad Gamer, Chad, Chad Gamer. We've got too much stuff, though. Because there's no Banelings or anything, so none of that does damage. There's no Lings, no Banes. Now, obviously, we want to swap from um, tanks into Thors, is what you do against Broodlords, guys. So, we had plus one vehicle weapons. We would have actually, if we were continuing to play against that, obviously the main thing is just keep Thanks for the making Bezos bio. Box. Keep using your bio effectively, you know, take a fifth base, that sort of stuff. Um, if you can get orbitals up, that'd be great. But in, if you're in a tight spot, start Thors. If you can get double armory, get both upgrades on them, that'll be huge. Um, and build a few Vikings as well. So stop building medevac, start building Vikings. Um, and what you can do is if you can't fight into that. So if I wasn't already breaking him, I would have been like, shit. I would have been splitting my army up and been like, okay, you guys are going to go down here and just try to fight on that side while the other half of my army is going to push the north. And the whole idea is if he pushes me back and fights my, my tanks are just completely ruined by the Broodlords. But if I attack two separate sides, he has to split his army. His Broodlords can't be everywhere. They're very slow. And we're trying to bait him into fighting away from his Broodlords and um, also giving me time to make Thors, to make Vikings, and to split into those next units. I was absolutely flabbergasted that he had both Banelings and Thors out there. Uh, really cool transition from my opponent, who was playing the Roach Ravager not as an all-in, but as a transition. Um, but you can see how hard they struggle with dealing with drops when they're spending all their gas on Roaches and Ravagers. GG's. Oh, right, guys, what do we got? Terran versus Zerg versus Emo Kills. Um, someone was saying Grubby has uh, has notes written up on his page. Can you can you link it up to me on like Twitter or Discord or whatever, or uh, or even in chat if you get access to that? I'd love to take a look at that. If it's public. I've uh, I've been writing up plenty of notes as well, learning AOE. You have to, man. If you don't write notes, you just it's, uh, yeah. Like I know Igaz. I'm pretty sure he refuses to write notes. He's like, well, if you can't keep it in your brain, what's it worth? And I'm like, man, it's about formalizing the uh, the lessons, you know. I think he likes. He's such a gamer. He's so good at organizing it in his head that it doesn't even matter. Anyway, guys, um, emo kills is from our chat, right? Good luck, have fun, mate. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen that name in chat before. And I don't think he's sniping, because I just I just came back from the ad break. Literally clicked find game, and instantly it, it, it found me uh, a game. So I don't think he was trying to snipe or anything like that, but uh, we'll see how it goes, guys. TVZ here, of course, this worker. Hello, Captain Dickhead. Captain Dickhead. I love it. Uh, <laughs> good job, good job. So we can try to cut him off. Basically, just leave it. As long as you leave an SCV attacking him, you'll be fine, guys. Um, and that guy can become my scout as well. So we're just going to go scout him. He's going to come back in. So bring another guy here. Make sure we're solid. So we've got Orbital Reaper. Reaper, we can already rally across the map. This guy's going to attack that drone. It's your time try to start getting hits on him and obviously we could put a command center on the high ground i'm just gonna build it there and yeah he's actually expanding behind it so well done guys so it's just a small thing but he's, he's just messing up my build a little now this is not free this really does slow his whole build down um our reap is just gonna go straight across the map we're just checking, did he build a pool and gas? And he did, they're finishing up now. So he's done a pretty standard build, guys. This is nothing crazy. Now his, his uh, overlord was floating in there. So we're gonna shoot that with our marine. Go straight into the reactor. Get the second gas. We're still trying to follow this build order. Still trying to follow the build order. Hello. Yeah. So he doesn't have any drones. Now that doesn't mean anything too crazy because obviously he sent a drone across the map. So the build order is just going to be a little more loose. Ready. On the 
And we're just going to run away now. So we're going to go... We, we shift-clicked him to take a safer route, right? And he does get out of there. I'm just going to send him back to check the third base locations and then go from there. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to lift that over to start. Add on complete. Okay, so I still haven't seen a third base, guys. Uh, main base is saturated. So what are we doing right now? Well, no third base at 3.30 means we have to send the Reaper into scout, remember. So we're going to do that soon. And it doesn't look like he's even spread creep, right? So these are all signs of, uh-oh, he's trying to all in me. <clears throat> so we keep our eyes on it. I'm actually going to just run in the front because I haven't even seen the Zerglings here. Okay. So notice we just queue him around. Okay, we're gonna have some Hellions there. Um, we see a Roachhorn. So an early Roachhorn coming in for my opponent. How many drones have we got? Some drones, not a crazy number. Okay. So we'll still try to see what we can do with our units, like in a pretty normal kind of pattern here. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So we'll just finish that wall off. Um, I don't really know if we needed to build all those depots so early. Anyway, let's see if we can get in there before the roaches are here. Oh, the roaches are here. All right, we're going to go around. You know what? We're going to play real, real safe, guys. Real safe, okay? Need something liberated? SCV ready. Course set. SCV ready. We're going we're gonna to play not, not even safe, but slow is what I mean here. This is actually like What's the slow on? way to play it. We read you. So what are we doing? We're defending behind our wall. Do you have tunneling claws? Is that what I'm seeing right now, guys? Or is that just the skin? Interesting. Anyways, uh, we really messed up the build here because I'm a silly Billy. Okay, we're going to go do a bit of an attack there. Meanwhile, we're going to put up the double eBay in the wall. What's going on? The double gas. We're going to go for a normal game here. We're building a tech lab. We might be wondering why. So, okay, these guys are going to siege up both mineral lines while these guys attack. So we want the ground army to die, but we just want it to distract. That's all we want it to do. So notice we're going to try and... See what we can do. So notice that lib. We'll just queue that over there. And we should be good. So we're not even going to look at that anymore, guys. Because we've already done the damage, I think. Oops. So got 1-1 one, one upgrades. We've got those going. going to take that there straight away. And that should be awesome. So we didn't even um, keep looking at it. Because at a certain point, you know, it gets kind of like... Do we really need to do that? And we want to start making tanks because roaches, remember? They're still on hatch tech, but they are making 1 1. And you can see here that my opponent now is going to cause me a lot of problems because I just left my wall open. Um, so we have to use our 1 Hellion, our popping marines, and our SCVs as our combat units. That should be fine now. Notice we try to hold position there a little bit. We're going to make sure he can't get out of this base, at least. And we're just going to keep... Whenever our SCVs are exposed like that, we hold position them, and then we A move them again once the Zerglings find other targets, okay? And then we F2, A move, you guys can go there. And we keep lowering depots, A moving, all that stuff. Good counterattack from my opponent. Really well done. Um, 
You could argue I'm a bit of an idiot for letting it get there, but um, that's okay. So just lift that as needed. I can put another tank down there. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, it's funny how if uh, the barracks doesn't burn while it's building, but if it finishes and it's red in red hit points, it's like, oh yeah, I'm on fire now. I finished. I finished building, and I'm too damaged. And you're like, what? <laughs> Does make sense, I guess. All right, guys, what are we doing from here? Chilling. Now you could have muters out, so let's build turrets. Don't do that shit. It's so dumb, guys. Don't be pussies. Our opponent. Took massive damage, built nothing but Zergans. Why would you do that right now? Stop being afraid. Be a Chad. Be a Chad. That is my rule, okay, guys? We're going to send a Hellion to the right watchtower. Zerg Marines to the left. All we're doing behind it is making Marines, tanks, medevacs. We're going to make three more barracks and a factory. We don't know what our opponent's composition is, guys. So let's do a little scanny scan. There's a Lero. We don't know if it's Roaches yet. But we saw lots of Zerglings, so we're thinking it's probably going to be Widow Mines. Let's find out. Yeah, Banelings equals Widow Mines for us. Kill those Overlords. There's a lot of Banelings. So we've got to stay near our Medivacs. That's the, the, the big mistake most people make, is they get a bit excited in these scenarios, and they run away from the Medivacs. So notice we stayed close to those. We got armor upgrades, and it's going to be a reactor on the second one. Okay? Now, guys little trick Research. you can drop marines so we can go drop a marine or you can say drop and then click now why is this worth it because it's worth killing banelings with marines Talk to me. so just a cute little tip is it worth your apm for a long time no but if you're ever not watching, just Black unload a single here. medevac in, in the middle. If you drop like one marauder, like eight banelings will blow up on that marauder. It's the best trade you'll ever take. Okay, guys. Um, our base layout sucks. Our tanks are having to drive all the way around, but that's okay. We're going to put a Widow Mine up there. We're going to once again grab some of these units, take that watch tower. We're going to put a tank up there. Uh, we're also going to start spreading tanks over to the right side. And we just want to build up a big army, guys. That's all we want to build. So let's get three depot builders. Lots of marines and marauders here. Um, let's swap from tanks into... Oh. Oh, my God. Oops. That was a bit of a mistake. I don't know. Oh, okay. So what happened there, guys, is I'd clicked my whole army on the medevacs. And even the guys that weren't on the control group were chasing. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's that's not how you Starcraft. That's that's very bad. I have almost no bio units right now, but we are swapping into uh, Widow Mines. I'll add a Thor in there if I get more money in a little bit. And in the meantime, what are we doing, guys? Just putting Widow Mines all over the map. And let's just grab these little tactical squads where if I'm not looking at it and it dies, it's not going to hurt me so much like that last one, okay? Because that one was pretty nasty, okay? Um... Upgrade. So we're going to go down there. That's a fourth base. So you see these guys can kind of bait into the Widow Mines there. This guy can go up there. Okay, we can get 3-3 three, three, potentially. Let's keep building SCVs for that. Try and make a planetary there. And that means we don't have any scans over here, so we're just seeing what we can get. And look at that, we see muters. That's pretty awesome. We're gonna run home. And then at this point, we actually say, hey, check it out, guys, I have an army. Let's build more Widow Mines. Let's make. More upgrades for them. And let's go push this Mutaling Bane player. We did great damage earlier, and then we just totally fell apart on the macro front. It's important for you to just go back in games like this and don't even think about the strategic side. Think purely about the mechanics and the set plays that you should have been doing. And in fact, look at the moments where you were thinking about strategy and remind yourself that that was the point where you should have done X and Y standard thing in your build order and nothing else than that. 
It's a pretty scary army, guys. I'm gonna put one more widow mine up there. Okay. Right, we're gonna try and take him on. So notice we just kind of spread our units out, not massively, so we do need to spread these guys back a little bit more. Because we had a lot of Marauders and a lot of Widow Mines, we kind of knew we were okay there, right? So that's kind of the, the little trick that went on there. So we're going to get more Command Centers, because what's our late game, guys? We're in Diamond 1, so we're adding in the late game edition, which is the Iron Bank. Now, if you're worried about late game not being able to keep up, the Iron Bank is the Great Equalizer. The Iron Bank is what allows us, as a, a Terran player, to keep pace with Storm, DTs, all the bullshit that all the other races have, that we don't get. But they do not get map packs. They do not get infinite mules. Oh, look at this guy's Ultras are out. So we let Ultras hit the field, so now we're going to start a step in a ball. Unless there's plenty of Banelings, which there is a few. That Widow Mine's not borrowed. So against... Notice we're just doing stutter step in a ball. Trying to build mostly Marines. Uh, mostly Marauders, sorry. Dude, how many times do I have to tell you to borrow? And as long as he doesn't clear up that Widow Mine field, we're pre feeling pretty good about that, guys. Oof. Okay. So you control click, make four orbitals at once, guys. Try to make a planetary. Try to make a planetary on location, but it's not as important as getting the other stuff. We want building armor and high sec. We want to grab our reinforcements, including the widow mines, and just keep pushing this angle. Now, at this point, you can also be a little bit cleverer than that, right? Just send a drop to the left. Just a single drop. You catch them out. That's huge. Also, do they have these bases up here? I think they do. Now, we actually have a bit of lag because uh, we're playing Western US. So it's a little bit slower for me to give these commands. I've got to wait for the unit to unburrow. You guys play cross server like I do, living in the arse end of the world. Just keep in mind that's something you don't have to do. We also did reactive splits. We're in Diamond 1. What can I say, guys? It's going to happen. We're going to do a bit more micro here. He's, he's on move command. He could have killed all of that. And we're going to do big fold up stutter step. Which remember, if he has enough banelings in there, we get punished for. So the reason we need to keep trading right now is my opponent is under enough pressure that he's fucking up his, his unit composition. If he actually just got a lot of banelings in there, he could punish me for balling up. But he's not going to. And the reason is that he's under pressure and he's just trying to survive right now. So as long as we can keep him in that mode, then guess what? It's just slings, it's just ultras, it's just bangs. And guess what? It doesn't have any anti air, so we can start doing this sort of stuff. We can go drop over there. These guys can click in here. We've got planetary, planetary, both going up. These guys drop in behind the mineral line. And look at that, we could drop in there as well. These guys are killing everything in there. Let's kill the Ultra Cavern. Let's go back, drop over there. And remember, we have unlimited bases. We can drop 30 mules and just mine a full base out. And we can go Command Center, Command Center, okay? The trick here is we do need to keep trading with him and keeping him down. Because if he goes, oh, I've got a few Corruptors, I can't do this. If he has a bunch of Banelings, I can't clump up. There's a lot of things that he could do that make my life infinitely harder. But notice he's trying to build more muters now. We can kill those. That would be great. So we're actually shift clicking them. And we're going to try to now boost out of there. Check it out, guys. We've got these guys as well. So we're going to try and break all this down. First the hive, then the spawning pool. Here we go. Mineral field depleted. Upgrade complete. And we go, okay. Got freedom. 
We start a step, we start a step. Remember, it's very important to start a step. Because otherwise your Widow Mind's going to friendly fire your own units as well. Really well played by my opponent there. That was a pretty sick game from them. Um, I did mess up pretty bad after my early damage. So let's go back and look at that. And then we could talk about the late game. And should we have a plan? Should we go range lips? Should we go ghosts? Technically, you can do just Thors and bio. You can do just bio mine and multi prong, which is probably the best way of playing, um, I would argue, because any other style gives up momentum. So if you play range lib, you do give up a bit of momentum. You need to keep lib harassing or bio drop harassing. Um, we can go back even earlier here because this, this this attack really confused me and I didn't follow a set response. I played really dumb. I played really dumb against it, which is silly. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. But what basically in the late game, it gets really interesting, doesn't it? Because you, you look at this late game where it's like, what what do you prefer as a composition? And I think that the preferred style, guys, is don't change what you're doing just split your units up more hit their bases more and you know carry that momentum through and that's what i really like as a way of improving um because it encourages you to multitask really well and and that sort of stuff now on the other hand other people prefer to have a good frontal push the question is what kills ultras right so liberators wreck ultras problem what if they counter attack you so if you're so focused on just one push the zerg can always avoid your army and kind of give up bases and overwhelm you at home on your production or your economy so it's really hard to try and do that. Yeah. Um. Oh, em Emo Kills is live right now? Good stuff. Awesome. Shout out to Emo Kills being a legend. Um. Was he not committed with the first roach stat? Yeah, my, my, my defense was really silly though. Really, really silly. So anyways. I'll talk about that. Let, let, let's go through the early game and then we, we can talk about the late game. And you guys can tell me what you prefer. Do you guys go Ghosts? Do you just try to win with Biomine? Do you try to go Mass Thor? Mass Thor live? Do you swap to BCs in late game? Like, what do you guys do? And what do you like in late game TVZ? Because um, I think everyone has different opinions on this. And I, I really think just keep playing Biomine. There's a lot of Koreans like Dream who do that. And they're like, nope, just keep attacking with Biomine and trading out and, and make it really hard for your opponent to have the right balance because if they have too much corruptors and muters and anti-air units those just aren't very good at fighting and then they end up with with kind of the wrong balance so let's go back and i said oh i'll try and do a really you know a really safe or, or not safe but low apm response now there was one very clear thing i should have done at this point guys so i was like hey maybe i'll dive in before the roaches are out let's see let's see if we can dive in so i see these roaches now there's a very clear thing here the aliens should click here shift click here Shift click in the mineral lane. Why? Because at this point, I, I assume it's just a slow roach pressure. I don't know, but I assume. Now, it could be a speedling all in behind that. I don't know that speed is so slow and that my opponent's taking a third and droning. I do not know this. But I've got more Hellions building at home anyway. I'm going to have at least four Hellions out by the time these roaches arrive, which can deal with a Ling Flood, right? Behind it. So go around, roast a whole natural of workers and win the game. You get so far out. Now, that's number one. Number two. We've just started our CC and our wall off. There's a real argument here for just cancel that, build it on the high ground, put an engineering bay in the wall off, guys. The other thing is just put a bunker down. Just put a bloody bunker down and put it really close to the wall off because in this case, we've got a full wall off. We want to defend our wall. Um, and the trick there is obviously, yeah, just get marauders and siege my lib here from the very start. So what did I do wrong here? Well, I didn't do any of that stuff and that would have been okay if I did things properly. Number one, where's my next step? Guys, it's 4.30. I should still be dropping an extra two barracks here. And I've already got a lib. And I should just be building a reactor there. And after I build, and if I bring these Hellions home, I don't need to build too many more, but let's say I keep building Hellions just to be super safe. And then when I, when I feel safe, I can swap that off. I can swap this off, put the two barracks on the two reactors, have a normal transition. So that would be awesome. But I don't do that. What do I do? Watch this. What is that bunker? Guys, if you've got a third command center and three depots in the wall, you're committing to the natural. You are not trying to hold the high ground. If I knew for sure my opponent was completely all in on a very low economy, pulling to the main ramp is fine. But this bunker up here makes no sense. I, I'm still not building extra barracks. Um, it, it's, it's a little bit strange. And then I queue up another liberator. This liberator was killing the overlook. Just go back and defend the roaches. All I needed to do was siege the lib here and my opponent 
would either have to make a bunch of ravages to kill it or they can't do anything. Single lib handles this whole pressure. So this was a massive over response from me. Multiple bunkers and mis-execution. So I lose my command center for literally nothing. For nothing. What an absolute bananas waste that is from you guys. And then my opponent has had a chance to drone up to two bases of workers. Now we do okay here in that my libs do queue in, right? My libs queue in and they do some damage, right? They do some damage. We kill a queen on the natural, we get a drone or two, we get a bunch of drones in the main. Meanwhile, we kill all the zerglings. I mean, this is awesome. This should have been great. However, because those barracks were so late, they're still not swapped. Where's our fourth and fifth barracks? Engineering barrack grades are only now starting. We've got bunkers that still haven't been sold. It's an absolute hot mess of a game. And it comes from that early misreaction and what was my instincts, which are totally wrong. My instinct was, go attack him! What do we always say as a fundamental rule, no matter your skill level, get your own house in order before you attack your opponent. There's a piece of a Hellion or a Marauder or something floating up there, I don't know. Always get your own house in order. So I, I could have moved across, but as I was moving across, I should have had a bit more focus on getting my macro going, queuing SCVs, selling bunkers, getting upgrades, all that stuff, and then going and doing this other stuff. Now, as it is, I obviously do a great amount of economic damage. We get another bunch of drones there by moving the lib. And then it should just be a really easy path to victory from here, but I leave my depot down while I have a single Hellion as my only combat unit, and I float my third down. This should absolutely be making an orbital, waiting for 10, 15 Marines to come out and then move down to the third, and this would be so easy. Now, obviously we let the Lings in and make this game way closer than it needed to be, and then the game gets kind of weird. But notice how when we're playing against Mutaling Bane, what do we do guys? We set up Widow Mines so we can see whenever our opponent's coming for us and we create problems for them. We, we, we queue those Widow Mines. We always just grab Widow Mine. You burrow there. You burrow over here. You burrow over here. And we split drops off where we can as well. Let's try to bait them into them. But then um, once we start pushing, what do we do? We just basically head towards our opponent's fourth. And as soon as we get near their territory, we spread our units out. Burrow our Widow Mines in a spread. And we just pre-spread our units and let them attack into it. Now, I was doing a bit more micro here. I was letting my units stay clumped because I had a big wall of Marauders with Concussive blocking them because this is a maxed out point in the game. This is not an early Widow Mine parade bush, right? So that's why my Marines are allowed to stay rather clumped here. And I'm just saying I'll reactively pull them back. My opponent does a good job of splitting their units up a little bit, but they would have been much better off just having their army split. So my opponent had the common... Con uh, syndrome, which is Mutalisks on the same hotkey as Ling Bane, which is really bad. It's really, really bad. And you can see that um, they're just attacking one area. Guys, if you've got good macro, which Emo kills macro up to a great position, split your army up. Do not waste your Ling Bane like this. Because Emo kills should have had half their Ling Bane running down and going to counterattack. And if they did that, I would have had to be responding, moving around, dealing with it. If they brought Overseers with it, it would be great. If they even brought half the army around the left and tried to sandwich me there, that would have been great. But it's just um, a lot of Zergs, until you get to an exceptionally high level, will keep their army in one big blob. And they'll do that, where they just go in a few units at a time to set off the mines. If you have enough Marauders, Marines, and mines, that's not going to work for them. And, and that's exactly what we saw this game. And we just keep grabbing our army, pushing forward that left side, setting up, and our opponent fights into us. And this is the dream. And this is the fundamental basis of ZVT TVZ, guys, is... Learn how to beat a Zerg that takes the fights that you want them to take. Set up on the edge of territory and say, and have them come into you and fight you. If they do that, you're gonna do well. As long as you're Marauder heavy enough as well, you're very Baneling, good against Banelings, good against Ultras, right? Um, the Widow Mines are also pretty annoying for your opponent to deal with. You can see my opponent forgot Overlord speed this game. Um, so they weren't quite able to, to kind of get on top of it. But yeah, you can see that basically it's like, I, I did some pretty good micro. I'm just spreading the units out though, for the most part. And I wasn't doing as much hands-off micro as I normally do, because I really wanted to move further forward. And he kept kind of jumping on me off creep, which kept kind of surprising me a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. You know, because he was really trying to get, get the jump on me and did a great job. Hemo kills did a great job in, in macroing up but just made the fights a bit too easy for me in terms of them being very one directional. And I was the one who had the leisure of, oh, I'm gonna split a drop off. I'll just, you know, do this and that. And I was able to just kind of go, okay, well this Zerg really wants to find me. And remember guys, if this Zerg is more passive, I would have sieged up my units like here, but cause he's in my face and I'm always scouting ahead and scanning ahead. 
I'm not letting myself get caught in a big ball walking into Baneling's Ergling Ultramuta. Yeah. Um, there's no reason for my opponent to go Vipers this game, guys. Yeah. What's the way of countering Fusion Core Libs? Oh, your Queen's, your queen's gonna reach you. But uh, as soon as you realize they've done that, drop a Spire. Because there might be a spot. Uh, I think Glittering Ashes has a, a few spots where you can't get them. But I feel like Queens should always be able to good transfers. Sure. So yeah, too much of a meat grinder for the Zerg here. And because they didn't clear up the Widow Mines either, it's um they're just gonna run out of money because of the units lost up, right? And there's was, there was nothing stopping me. And I actually was really safe with all those tanks from the early game. I actually just said, hey, I'm going to leave my tanks at home, guys. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five tanks just set up on defense duty. All game. A lot of people would be like, what the hell, dude? Bring them to fight. We could do that, but it would be an unnecessary complication. So we're keeping things simple for us. I'm going, bio mine. Just one siege unit. Bio mine. Oh, that was brutal. And these Widow Mines are all getting double digit, double digit kills, man. Those, those front ones, 20 kills, 13, 10. These ones are all getting second and third shots off, 9 kills. It's, uh, it's, it's just getting to that point. Those Widow Mines basically just won me the game. So, not bad, not bad. You got it. Right? There was multiple games where I screwed the pooch, and that could have resulted in me losing the game. But it didn't because... Uh, we were able to kind of exert that game knowledge and mechanics both, right? And, and we explained those pretty well, I hope. It might be a bit of a better lesson for some people. Um, we had a bunch of people rage quit and just leave games and stuff as well. But yeah, yeah, it might be a better lesson if I did let myself lose those games to really let it sink in what those mistakes are. But I think that's only because some people have deaf ears, you know? Like, you know, some people, like, you can explain something and they're just deaf to it unless you show it to them. But I, I don't know. I know Bronze to GM is kind of focused on those people to some extent, I guess. But I still can't bring myself to, like, lose heaps of games. And just because it'll take so much longer to, to replay the same situations over and over again, you know? Um, and, and, and it'll... I, I don't want to smurf for too long, I guess. Um, I feel like we get so many games anyway through Diamond League because Diamond's such a big league, That's Masters League is pretty big as well that I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know, man, I feel fine. I feel fine just uh, explaining, okay, I really messed up here and here. This is what I did to fix it, but realistically looking at it and I, you know, I try to write down the notes of what I did wrong. Get out of here, Loggins. Hello, mate. What are you up to? Little cheeky bugger. Gonna block him again. Hello. Oh, the orbital didn't start. Whoops. Bad news. Sure thing. Yo. Oh, good blocking by him. Really good micro, actually. Go ahead. Big job. Oh, no piece of me, boy. What's going on? We're gonna block his gas, guys. This better. Bad news. Our SCVs are under attack. So notice we're, we're just hugging the gas, guys. And then my guy got kind of stuck, which is not great. So we, we blocked him from taking the gas for a little bit there, guys. Hello. Now he could kill that now if he's got a probe on the natural. Factory, second gas. Add on complete. Mm. Let's get that uh, bunker started. What's going on? That's a very late bunker, guys. <laughs> loose builds, loose builds. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when there's a loose, loose Starcraft build? Well, the adept is gonna be uh, potentially a very real problem this game, as you can see. So we're gonna have to, of course, um, make that. So, this is all due to my build not being tight, for anyone who's wondering. And because of that, we couldn't afford an SCV, because we had to keep building Marines. And there we go. Ah, you scared me! 
Command center up. Okay, so by the SCV ready. In the rear with the gear. Ready for dust off. Waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Okay. SCV ready. Ready to race. Go, go, go. Word. Okay, Big we're gonna go straight SCV in. Ready. See if we can do some damage with that. We've got the tech labs on the way, as always, guys. And then, of course, building more marines, more SCVs behind us. And the whole point is we are meant to drag the eyeballs away. So we're going to pull that back and then queue that around and then to drop the base. And really great response in terms of micro from my opponent. No! Fucking shield battery. I even knew there was a shield battery there, but I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. I knew there was a shield battery. I was like, I shouldn't go in there because there's very low chance of us getting anything done. But you know, I'm like, ah, oh, so out of position defending that. Anyway, we did some good damage, guys. Um, we've got the bunker there. It's very important for us to put an SCV in front. Now, what are we doing? These SCVs here are all on auto repair and they're on second army hotkey, so I can pull them to the front. Everything else is going to be focused on up here in the main, okay? Now, why are we doing it that way? Very simple, guys. Very obvious reason. Um, obviously, uh, make sure the natural solid first and foremost. Um, I actually ended up boxing them, even though we had them on a hotkey. I think that was okay, guys. I think that was okay. I think we got an observer just then. That was kind of cool. We're going to see if we can go out and catch him. Oh, we got the raven. What an ass. I was hoping I'd just catch him off guard enough. Oh, hello. That's interesting. I was not expecting this. Okay, cool. Anyways, um, we've got a fourth barracks. Don't ever build a fourth barracks. I started building that because I was going to build fourth and fifth barracks, and I realized I'd forgotten eBay's and gases. So we, we said, calm down. Your opponent's being annoying. Deep breaths. Do your macro the way you're supposed to do your macro. I'm like, but I want to I want to go kill my opponent. And I'm like, no. Bad pick. So guys, what are we going to do? We're going to keep these marines on the edge in case he comes in again. And uh, I will build some other stuff. But everything else is going to go down there. Oh, hello. Oh my god. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got it. Oh, that was real good. That was real good. Now, I don't know if he has, um, uh, you know, dudes anywhere. Um, what do I mean by dudes? Uh, you know, uh, observer, the pervert. The pervert guy. You know the invisible guy that's always watching in the shadows? You're hanging out as an SCV trying to mine your minerals and you can hear just this little weird, weird noise. You know? You guys know the noise I'm talking about. And you're like, what the fuck is that? So anyway, guys, uh, we were not meant to be doing the third base version. We were meant to be doing two base bit, uh, pushes, but I forgot because I have the memory of a goldfish, okay? Hope you guys don't mind this. Uh, we will build turrets on the edge in case he does replace his 
um, warp prism. It'll get damaged on the way in at least. Now you can see we're, we're kind of looking around for his observer. We can, we can go, oh, I built a turret there. I built one here. Maybe he's got one over here. I don't know, man. Maybe. I doubt it, though. And we can go. Okay, cool. Guess what, guys? Gas, gas, factory. And remember, actually, we go two factories, don't we? We've been playing three factory. Super cool style. Um, let's drop another supply drop since these guys were a little late on that. And cue them to build some more. Put more guys on gas, Do a few more SCVs. We're almost up on three base right now. So why didn't we push earlier, you might be wondering. Um, the reason is very simple, guys. Uh, okay. Uh, we had to catch up on our macro. We didn't have any tanks. So at this point, guys, we're going to take a little dropship. Take the watchtower. We're also going to send out a few marines there. A few marines around the map. And we can go cool. Okay, we can drop a third a scan there, sorry. We can go, what? Wait, what? Okay! Did you see what I, I just saw, guys? This Chad Gamer of a Protoss player has four bases. Uh... And I actually sieged my tanks way too close because I was triggered by their base count. And we're just going to back off now. Just to make sure. This player is a beast. Yeah, I was, I was so triggered by it. I was like, wait. I was like, who's crazy enough to do that, man? He's like, I'm a Protoss player. I'm like, that's actually really sick. But if I did my earlier push, it would have been a free win, right? So this is just kind of the, the thing where it's like, ah, oh, this is why we hit timings, guys. Because people will play ridiculously greedy if you let them. That's StarCraft. You've got to punish people. It is on you to make sure people's excessive greed is punished, okay? Now we're going to send out a big double drop out that left side to clear up pylons and whatnot. Okay, let's take this fourth. Our SCVs are under attack. Base is a low Upgrade complete. Our SCVs are under attack. Upgrade complete. You got it. What's going on? You want a piece of me, boy? Okay, so what are we doing, guys? Well, we're handling all this bullshit that we let our opponent do because we gave them too much time. We're gonna try and deal with that. And at the same time, we are gonna try and push, okay? We're gonna swap to a more conservative rally point there. We're gonna build SCVs. These guys are going to just hide there for now and get ready to move. We're sending spotters out. We're going to just quickly scan the middle of the map. All right, let's go through the middle. These guys are going to stay there. Does he have the top base? Yes, he does. Okay. And what else are we doing, guys? Remember, we don't build ghosts. Ghosts are for tryhards. Mineral field depleted. Okay, he's no he's going back south. These guys were gonna go in. We're trying to multi-prong him. So we're trying to just We could use some help here. Mineral field. SCB ready. So I think that was micro well enough, so we're just looking away, trying to get more orbitals, because I'm out of scans, guys. 
Ah, I could have. I went way too deep there. Oh, well, it's a shame. GG, well played. Did you guys see the greed? This is why you hit timing attacks as a Terran player and you don't jerk it in your corner of the map, guys. Took a third and then took a fourth off no units. Absolute Chad Gamer. See? Log Kenny Loggins here was like, I'm just going to take a fourth base. And I was like, you can't do that. What if I pushed out with my first few tanks? You wouldn't have any units. My opponent said, well, I got, I got a robo and I'm going to go two forge. And I'm going to make four bases of probes. And if you let me get away with it, I'm going to run away with this game. And I, I absolutely should have, guys. I absolutely, look at that. This, this, this guy's a psychopath, but this is what you run into on the ladder. And what has your opponent got to defend? A couple of shield batteries, really good shield battery placement, a couple of stalkers. There's no real army here, guys. Heck, I, I could literally have been playing a Biomine style and just picked up my army and dropped in the main and it's game over. It's game over, man. It, now, obviously, my tank production sucked, but even if I just pushed 11 Marauder, 17 Marines, 2 tanks... There's no way he gets his fourth base up. Obviously, I can't necessarily headbutt into battery overcharge. Oh, wait, yes, I can. There's no damage in this army. It's only a handful of units. So this is why... <sighs> you follow your goddamn build order. And that's why you have attacks built into it. Attack timings. What's our... Eight minutes, one, one, bio medevac push with four siege tanks. Now, that's off the macro version of the build, guys. Should be at least three tanks. About 8, 8.30, right? Even off the 3cc version like we did there. Why me not have any units? I mean, I've actually got... I, I do have... I mean, my, my one... Even if I did hit with my 1-1, one, one, even that would have been an okay time. But we just took way too long here. And we let our opponent do whatever they wanted to a certain extent, guys. Now, obviously, this, this flows back to an early mistake we made in the build order. This was a loose build. This is the end of the day. And you've got to lock this shit down, guys. If you're losing, it's the end of a long day for me. And if you're if you're getting loose and looser, why am I still chasing that? Where's my reactor? These are all problems. Why am I messing around blocking my opponent's gas? I literally tooled myself by being like, <laughs> I'm blocking the gas. Well played to Loggins, who's an absolute beast, though. Played like a Chad, guys. But what am I doing with this SCV, guys? I'm trying to annoy him. Does this annoy him? Of course it does. It's kind of annoying when someone blocks your gas. Is that going to win you the game? No, but what we do is we started from here to throw ourselves off. I, this, this tells me I've been playing for too long today because I'm just doing things because I'm like, that seems funny, you know, blocking a gas, right? It tells me I'm, I'm running to the end of my, of my gaming endurance, right, guys? GG, Kenny, you played really well, mate. He was trying to bluff the whole time. You played very well, mate, GG. So that's the first thing, guys. And because of that, well, this SCV is meant to build a bunker. Or well, this depot SCV actually is normally what builds it. Why is that depot SCV? That depot SCV should be rallied down there. That is the build. We forgot to do that. So the bunker's not on time, right? So that's a mistake. We also, remember, didn't build our reactor immediately, which means these extra marines are a little late. Quite a little late, right? So then the adept comes in, and it's able to... It should get its ass kicked by the marines, right? It should take a whole bunch of damage if it wants to just get two hits off. Instead, it kills two marines and an SCV and opens up the way for everything else to happen. So then our whole opening is dipped, right? So we have had a big flow on effect from just basic mistakes in our opening. Fix your opening. Your opening's tight for a reason. So we should be unloading normally 435. We unload with seven Marines in the main, right? And the three aliens running. Guys, hello? Look how far away my drop is and it's only six Marines. So we're so far behind what we're meant to be hitting. Now... Because there were shield batteries in both base, and I already saw that shield battery going down, I should have just gone home with this drop. This did great damage, guys. Look at this. The three aliens did great. He had an awesome economy, by the way. Great. And, and pretty good micro to defend it. That's still good damage. That's great damage. We should be super chilled with that. But remember also today, we were trying to do a two base follow-up. So I've got to break this habit of this third command center. And remember at this point, guys, it's double gas, an engineering bay, and a fourth and fifth barracks. And that's going to set us up for our big two base push really well. Would have been perfect as a way to really take the fight to our opponent and try to follow up immediately from this damage. But as we saw, guys, if you come in with a drop of six Marines and there's a shield battery, what did we do? We managed to wear the shield battery energy down a little. Not what we need. Now, if we think about it, a probe has 40 hit points, a Marine does six damage. If you have eight Marines, what's eight times six, guys? Does anyone know numbers? 48. 
48. So if you sync up eight Marines or even seven, you can one shot those probes. You move in until they're all in range and you click a probe and then you move and you click a probe. And that way the shield battery can't be useful because you're one shotting. So you've got to remember if you guys are going to do this, you've got to target probes and you've got to have at least seven Marines. Six is not enough. Six times six is 36, which I guess, if, I guess you could two shot probes. Even with the battery healing them, if we think about it, as long as they're all synced up, we could two-shot probes. With six marines. Even with five marines, five times six, 30, you'd still be able to two-shot marines. As long as you got five marines or more, we could have gone for the probes here. So if we were going to go back in here with this, it was only going to be worth it if we were going to do that advanced micro. This is something I never actually thought about before. How many marines does it take to get through a shield battery? And how do you do it? But if they're all shooting on different timers like this, and they're shooting different targets, you see it does nothing. GG, very well played. All right, guys, we've got a TVT versus blank here. You guys are doing bets? What are the, what's the, will Pig win his match in 11 minutes? Oh, shit. Good on you guys. Thank you for putting those up. Activill on the gambling ring master, man. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, that was my second SCV. Yeah, I told you guys I'm, I'm kind of losing focus What's at this point. On? Oh my lord. <laughs> that depot is like seven seconds late or something, man. It's like seven That's seconds late, rate. man. I don't know. Right, let's take a gas now, I guess. We've got nothing to do. Uh, we're playing wall off with the next two depots, I guess. And this depot is just going to take up some prime real estate. Why not? And let's send an SCV across. All right, guys, so my barracks is late because of my depot being late. There's the flow-on effect of my build being poopy. So how do we make sure we fix it from here? Well, basically, you just got to be a little more careful. Um, I'm not going to assume I have as many units as my opponent at any point in the game, especially in the early game. Um, we're really going to play uh, a little passive until our three Reaper 2 alien. We're not going to risk going across with a single Reaper. Um, we'll just scout for uh, very nearby proxies, potentially, and, and leave it at that. No, his SCV is going to come in and attack me. That's fine. Get out of here. Reaper's here, as well as the orbital. Now, he's only on one gas, guys, so we expect him to be expanding. Hey, check it. Okay. So he's doing an expand build. We're going to run home, guys. Um... Third base up there. Upgrade Fourth complete. base up there. Um, now we could still try and poke with the Reaper, right? Yeah, I think we'll do it. And we'll just rally to him. Cause we don't really have, I don't think we have any real damage we could take here. Okay. Oh yeah. Now you can, they can build two Reapers with this sort of opening. They can do that if they choose. All right, we're building the command center, which does slow down the Hellion from starting. What's going on? Got something for me to kill. SCV ready. The Grim Reaper has arrived. Oh. Oh. Okay, we're making the yeah. Reaper run away now. I'm listening. Got something for me to kill. And awesome. I think we're good, guys. Now his his bunker is kind of pretty late, right? So I think maybe we can get in there. Our depot is going to finish right on time. And let's just see if we can do anything now. Oh, yep. So as we said, if they're expanding and you're doing a one base build, you can afford to be pretty aggressive. Oh, shit. Uh, there's like that part of me that's trying to restrain my micro just a tiny bit, and then there's the other part that then just gets really indecisive when I do that. So that's another fresh mule, otherwise why would it be on the natural, guys? So we're just going to run away now. And this is awesome. So we're just going to take that third command center. 
in the main. Um, our add-ons were a little slow, but that's totally fine. Now, did we see another command, command center? Upgrade. Is that what that was, Complete. guys? I feel like that might have been another command center. I didn't even... No, that's probably just a factory. There's no way. No one would be that insane. Well, they might. You never know. It's ladder. People do crazy things. So we've got the third command center. So it's important now to make the two tanks. Uh, let's make the two Vikings. Oh, the two barracks, I meant. Um, let's make these. Okay, so I think we're just going to chill for a moment. And I'm trying to wonder... I think we're going to put marine spotters out. Yeah, I think we're going to put marines on the edge just to see if our opponent kind of um, comes out at all. And then everything else is just going to chill very defensively. I accidentally built a Widow Mine that was meant to be a siege tank, guys. So that's a big mistake for me. Um, hello? All right, we want to do a supply drop to help get out of this supply block now. And remember the two Viking harass. We always do that two Viking harass. And come on, supply drop. There we go. All right. Which we did right as our command center finished, so entirely unnecessary. Remember, if you're a little late on that, you probably don't need to, guys. Oh, let's see if we can... So this is where you do a fancy bait, guys. Oh, no! Oh, that's beautiful. And then you run the Widow Mine away. Yeah, this is this is Chad Gaming. Okay, and then we're going to land these two Vikings. It looks like he wants to push us forward. Our Widow Mine's going to run further away. We're just fixing up our saturation, making the double eBay, making the double tech lab. Okay, you can go there, you can go there. And you can see the Viking land is almost always really effective. If you do any micro, it's just shift click the workers, nothing else. So I'm going to send my cyclone forward, see if we can um, kind of get some idea of what's going on. Stim and shields, lots of marines. And in Masters, we're going to change the build order, by the way, to be a lot more efficient, for those who don't know. We're going to start using more Ravens, more Ghosts in TVP. We're going to play um, more Multiprong in TVP. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff that we do, so I'm really looking forward to that, actually. Now, I haven't really scanned my opponent to see what they're up to. It looks like Stim into Bio. Just going to put some Marine Spotters out, and uh, awesome. We're just both in macro mode right now. Gary and Bruce will never stop building. And these guys are going to build two more yeah. barracks. And that's perfect, guys. SCVs, mules, notice we've got spotters everywhere. So any drop that comes in, it could be really annoying at this early stage. Just two marines will give us so much early warning of that. And there's a good chance your opponent, after seeing it spotted, doesn't even risk going in. They're just like, ugh. We've been spot spotted, turn, turn around, you know, that sort of thing. Now, those gases are a little early because you can see I'm already floating a lot of gas, right? I haven't really been consistent with my tank production, my Viking production, anything like that. So let's try and ramp those up a little bit. And let's also go Armory because we've gone 4th and 5th Barracks. Always we go Armory. After the 4th and 5th Barracks, those are kind of chained together. And uh, you can't do one without them doing the other right afterwards, okay? Now, obviously, our marine production's a bit weaker because we do the, the double tech lab. You could lift those off if you want. Now, we can start pushing right now. We can push later. Let's just scan and see. Does he have Vikings? Yeah. So, because he's fighting me in the Vikings, I'm not going to build a single medevac because I have the, the philosophy of I would rather have no medevacs, uh, no Vikings, than have one less Viking than my opponent. Because if I have one less Viking... He's going to crush the air fight, and the fight is just going to be like, well, what was the point in even having them? So I would rather just not stim my marines, except when I really need to, win the air fight, and then I can add some medevacs. So we're going to start pushing now, guys. And notice he's got good vision there. So we're going to try and attack this angle. So we've got a fourth building on location. We've got a second factory to round out our two base production before we add the barracks. So we're just sending these marine spotters in to see what's up. So 
So what looked like a really cool angle there is a horrendous fight because I didn't siege early enough because I was what we call a greedy cuck. And really great hold from my opponent who fortunately does send a unit to die there. Um, planetary over there. Try and protect that one. So we had a few spotters there. I figured that he would have F2'd to defend that. Ooh, we've got lots of marines there. Awesome. Add on complete. So notice at this point we are a little low on uh, marines after throwing away an army. Command center. And that's always the next thing we do anyway, right? There's extra barracks there. Pretty big army, guys. We've got to be real careful here. Just gonna try. Oh, that was a huge widow mine. Oh, go for it. Go for it. Spread the marines out. I forgot that widow mine was even. It just killed his entire marine army. Oh, that is so bullshit. I cannot believe that. I would be so triggered if I was him. Oh, my God. That was insane, guys. Holy crap. That, like, hit right in the center of mass. Oh my lord, that was wild. We're now going to go drop the left side. Uh, oh. We're going to go drop the right side as well. Oh, he just ate it again. Okay, so this better be good. So notice we're in the, the mineral lines right now. Oh! Whoop. So notice we're just going shift shift hold position, okay guys? I'm gonna pick one marine there, drop it there. That's called creating a problem, okay? And you can drop on those tanks as well. So this is not about like defeating your opponent with that move, it's just about giving him problems to deal with that are really annoying and are going to tax him. Uh, we've got enough marine advantage here, we should be able to just spread over that. Potentially? Or not. So you can see, just, just dropping those marines and all those mineral lines, really annoying. Really annoying. And that's all we needed to do there. Awesome. All right, so now we can just... I mean, this is not a big army, guys. We're, we're not even going to care about that. I mean, we will chase him down just because why not? Uh, whoops. I had the wrong unit selected, so Stim wasn't working. So this is the point where you want to go a couple of orbitals. That's where your iron bank comes from, guys. Okay, so we're going to push forward here. And we're going to try and come in with that nice arc of marines. And okay, cool. We got it. GG's. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, kind of interesting to see the way that the different pushes work, right? Um, that first push I did was just so dumb. It was just so dumb. That's like a classic TVT maneuver. It's like, oh, I'm gonna go. I can't just siege up on the edge. It's like, dude, you're already on the other guy's side of the map. Like he has defender's advantage. I don't have that many Marines because I'm doing this kind of inefficient double tech lab build. Come on, man. Like just, just, just hold, you know, take up a siege position here in range of the factory. That's all you need. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get in there and cut off the bases entirely. It's like, I did not need to push this far forward. And the thing is, I was going to siege there, but then I realized it would block my Marines because there was no gap there. So I was like, oh, I'll move forward a bit more. It should be fine. This is a terrible attack for me. And um, this is not what you should do, guys. Don't, don't do that. Don't, 
Don't, don't, don't do what I did there. Everything else this game was good. We were ahead. We were at 69 workers. We had the power of memes. We we're up in supply. We had a fourth base going down. We've got 2-2 on the way versus a guy who's kind of stuck on 1-1, one, one, right? Hasn't started this 2-2. Two, two. We're up three tanks. We've got way more Vikings, so we've got air control. The only thing we're down in is Marines, and only barely. This is a massive advantage to us. This is an awesome, beautiful game. The Big Dirty says, get in the hot tub, pig. You want me to get in the hot tub? What? You think I need to get clean after I got this dirty? After I got him this dirty? To be fair, it was a pretty scary counterattack. I was very worried. And then this happened. Oh, they're already so wounded. Oh my God, that mine. Oh my God. And then, so then we get all of his tanks. That beautiful lead he built for himself. He, he saves two tanks. And then... Walks into it again. Oh! <laughs> oh, I definitely need to wash myself off after that one, guys. Ooh-wee! Oh, oh. Ooh, that was Sergeant Marine Fiddler, that widow mine. Oh, he has a lot of outstanding court cases. That one was nasty. That was nasty, that was. Ooh, 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 ooh. Masters! GG! Masters 3, let's do it. Hi-oh! 